Good morning, good morning, good good morning, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to Friday. Oh my gosh, Friday, November the 25th, 2022, the day after Thanksgiving. It's Black Welcome Friday out to there. Friday. Let me mute that. How you doing today? I hope you're all doing well out there. I hope you uh, didn't overindulge and you you paced yourselves and you didn't get into any fights with the relatives and friends. You you maintained a, a decorum and you bit your tongue. And <laughs> hey, how many of you, uh, kind of curious, uh, how many of you were uh, approached uh, uh, over the last uh, 24 hours? 48 hours by uh by anyone um that said hey listen i uh, I, I hear that you're uh <clears throat> you're doing something in the market that's uh like it's really working out for you or something or or or, or are you making like you're making some kind of investments or something like that and it's kind of it's kind of paying off for you what, what, what what's going on is that true uh, how, how you how's it? uh have any of you been approached with uh, i hear that uh you're thinking about quitting your um Quitting what you you think about quitting your job and uh, thinking about uh, just being self-employed. Uh, uh, what 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 would you do? Uh, what what what's going on? I, I can, this sounds really interesting. What what's happening there? Uh, any any of you have any of you been um, you know uh, quietly approached by um, a sincere sounding relative or friend? And, Want to know what the option thing is that you're doing? Uh, what what's that all? What's all? I, I, you're you're the story goes, you're watching a guy on YouTube who has very little hair, and whatever hair he's got is pretty well all white. Um, he's uh, he's 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 homeless. He has a Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife that no one ever sees. Um, he apparently wears titanium extenders on his legs because he's only four foot eight inches tall in real life. And the word is that he looks like he's six feet tall, but no one believes it. Um, and he uh, he uh, he is on the internet all the time talking about how you could become like the master of your own domain, like kind of like a Seinfeld episode, but not like a Seinfeld episode. It's different than that. Um, is that true? Um, uh, what what's what's the deal? Uh, can, you, you, uh, what, what are you doing? Um, have any of you been approached by somebody like, has that happened to any of you this weekend? Um, I don't know. Uh, I know that, uh, during the year it happens. Uh, people uh, tell me all the time. Oh yeah. My brother-in-law came up to me, my, my cousin, my, my wife's nephew's brother, sister. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we, we get asked all the time what we're doing and, um, are, are you sure you're okay? Are you, are you, uh, you know, you're not like, like a, you're not like in a cult, right? Like you didn't join some kind of a, you know, you're not going around airports, you know, banging little drums and chinking little, little shakers, like little Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You're not doing that, are you? Like, what is this group you're with? Um, you're something, a rumor it has it, you're something of a, of a bagel member of some kind or something. You're, you're part of a bagel family. Like what? What exactly uh, can you tell me in 30 seconds what it is you're doing and how it's changing your life? Um, how are you guys doing on that? Um, <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Um, everybody having fun? I'm having fun. Uh, thumbs up for the uh, four, four, thumbs up number 42 for the four, four foot eight inch balding homeless Canadians. <laughs> Thank you, White Feathers. <laughs> We love it. Thank you for the thumbs ups. They're coming in already. Um, if you had a good time uh, for Thanksgiving, give me a thumbs up. If you had a bad time, give me a thumbs up. If you had a so-so time, give me thumbs ups. Uh, if you're just glad it's Black Friday, give me a thumbs ups. Um, and you got nothing better to do with yourself, give me a thumbs up right now. Uh, thank you very much. Let me know what number you are. We do appreciate it. Uh, Jen and I, of course, being in, in Canada... What do you think we did? Uh, I took the day off because it's Thursday and the markets are closed in the U.S., so I'm not working. Um, I ended up going to my my masseuse, who my, my my therapist, and I got my got myself worked on yesterday. She's a miracle worker. I loved her, love her. And then and then uh, uh, Jen was watching NFL football all day long, three games. I mean, Jen was on the couch. <laughs> Having a great old time watching that, um, and uh, and uh, we uh, we uh, we had a dinner last night here, which is you know you buy you buy these dinners at Costco and you just put them in the oven, 
45 minutes, an hour later, they're done. <laughs> Perfect dinner. We did that. And um, gosh, I was in bed by uh, 9, 9.15 in the evening. My time, I was... I was upstairs and I was asleep in no time. Um, and then at 4.30 this morning, the alarm went off and here I am. I'm awake and I'm back for more for a, a shortened day. We're only open till 1 o'clock Eastern time in New York today instead of 4 o'clock Eastern time. Traditional. It's usually that's the way it is. Days like today um, can be somewhat interesting, but also quiet. It depends. Um there are, you know, the rest of the world, this is a normal day. So it's just a normal Friday for everybody else, except America and kind of Canada. Canada is into the U.S. Thanksgiving in a way. We we do consider today in Canada to be Black Friday. Uh, there are Black Friday sales everywhere in Canada right now. I mean, we are so into this. Um, and as a former retailer, I can tell you that a day like today is a big deal for us, even in Canada, because... We would normally, uh, in my past life, being a retailer, people would come in who would take today off. They would get today off. Uh, they would uh, uh, not work Thursday or Friday during U.S. Thanksgiving. And, of course, in Calgary, this city in which I am at the moment, uh, there are probably um, 250,000 Americans at least here that live here all the time, year-round. They're here legally. They're here as workers. Um, they're here as expatriates, and they're 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 working here on behalf of their <clears throat> American companies. Uh, there's a whole bunch of oil and gas companies here, but there's also a whole bunch of other companies here that are U.S. based, specifically IBM's, uh, Hewlett Packard, uh, Microsoft is here, Google is here. They're all here. They're all here. And we love them. And uh, we have a ton of Americans in this city. And um, uh, we uh, we are very well aware that July 4th, a lot of folks get the day off. <laughs> Thanksgiving, folks get the weekend off. And, um, and a bunch of Americans right now are in Banff and Lake Louise and Jasper. They're skiing. They're skiing in the mountains right now, having a wonderful time. And so as a retailer, I would have my American clients come on in. And uh, since I had at one time a sports shop uh, offering ha baseball hats and any any team logo you wanted, I pretty well had it. I'd, I'd have Steeler fans come in, Patriot fans, uh, Eagle fans, uh, 49er fans, uh, every fan of every team would come in and uh, they'd want to get something. And uh, they'd be looking for bargoons or, or just this is a day to shop. And they would come into my little shop and realize, here's an independent sports store. This guy's not part of a chain at all. He's an independent guy. And he's got stuff no one else has because we made a point of bringing product in that no other sports store brought in. And uh, that's how we tried to survive. Um, of course, today, uh, everything in the sports business, is sports clothing business, online by the leagues, they have taken over their own business and they have kicked out and have eliminated all the mom and pops that used to exist they don't sell to them anymore they won't let them buy from them at a wholesale price and so you've got the fanatics of the world the big chains only and then you've got the nfl.com mlb.com nhl.com nba.com they sell you their merch and all the mom and pops are gone so you go to your local shopping mall 20 years ago uh in a time machine with a flux capacitor walk around and take a look at all the stores that were in the shopping mall 20, 25 years ago. Go back today to that same shopping mall, and you'll be shocked at how how fewer, how how many, how less the number of stores are in the malls. Uh, you used to see uh, 200 stores in a shopping mall. Now you see 120 because the stores are larger, but they're all chain stores, and they're all identical. So if you have five shopping malls in your hometown, they have the exact same stores in every one of them, and they've cornered the market, and the brand names have cornered their niche, and they've taken the real estate away. And uh, um, mall managers used to be independent malls. are now all these malls are owned by pension funds, mutual funds, and, and big hedge funds, and they're all inside gigantic real estate development trusts that control the whole deal. And uh, uh, the way it works is uh, you want to open up a shoe store in a shopping mall? Uh, you're not getting in because unless you're part of the chain of someone's chain, you can't get in because they've basically signed 
uh, non-compete clauses. Um, so there might be three or four chains only that are allowed in for shoes and no one else. And um, you want to go to an independent shoe store, you have to go to someone on an independent property, like a strip mall downtown somewhere, not in a not in a shopping mall. It's it's all over. Unless the shopping mall is on its last legs, has been dumped off, uh, and is a, a mall that's full of what we call temps, temporary tenants only because the mall's days are numbered. Five years from now, it's going to be gutted. Ten years from now, it's going to be leveled. It's going to be replaced with office complexes or apartment blocks or whatever. That's the only place that uh, independents can really go. And, of course, for shoppers, they know where to go for certain unique things. But when it comes to casually buying shoes, you might go to uh, you know a handful of places only to, to, to buy. And you'll notice that the shop, the selection is crap because it's the same chores, chain stores everywhere. And they carry the highest margin product in their stores, not the one you want. <laughs> it's it's not the same anymore. That's just me. I, I just, I'm just an old retail. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for uh, popping in and seeing us. We have a kind of a mixed bag this morning. Uh, the Dow's up 34 points. Uh, retail's up. Uh, S&P's up one. And Nasdaq's down 29. And there you go. Uh, we're down 96 cents on crude oil, 79.08. Um, this week, next week, the week after, all it's all about tax taxes, capital gains, capital losses, everything else. Uh, a lot of um, firms out there, investment firms, if they're worth their salt, are consulting with their clientele to help advise them on what to do between now and the middle of December regarding your tax situation. And uh, those of you who are bringing income in, uh, option writers are cashing in as the market's waiver is the title of my show today. You option writers are bringing in money into your account. And those generally are considered capital gains by the IRS, if you're an American. Uh, some of you, IRS might try to claim this is income, that you, you don't have capital gains. This is income because this is the majority of what you live off of. It all depends on what state you're in, what city you're in, what's, what you do for a living, uh, how you invest, in what do you invest? Do you invest in your name? Do you invest in a corporation? On and on and on. I'm not a tax man. Never have been, don't want to be. And so I can't give you exact advice as to what to do other than to say, get your butt over to a tax professional, ASAP, for advisory services for you where you are and the circumstances you're in so it's different for everybody okay um one thing i will mention on this show i, I see about 121 of you here you're slowly coming in thank you for popping in and throwing the thumbs ups at us everybody good morning good morning i love you all um if you're not a gold bagel member if you're not one of these guys for my channel first of all shame on you but that that's 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 beside the point i forgive you if you're not but if you're not a Gold Bagel member, you have not heard what I'm about to tell you. Um, what I'm about to tell you, I mentioned Wednesday evening on the primetime show that I do every week just for Gold Bagel members. Eight o'clock primetime with Uncle Bruce. On the eight o'clock primetime with Uncle Bruce show this past Wednesday night, I revealed what my objective is as a YouTuber doing what I do on this channel. Um, for those of you who are, were wondering, you know, why does he, when, when does he consider what he does sort of mission accomplished? My mission is accomplished when you, who, all of you out there who are watching, I'm pointing at you right now, do you see me? Those of you watching me right now, my job is done with you guys. And it's an individual thing. It's not the whole channel at once. It's each of you one by one by one. When you're in a position to bring in $30,000 a month in option premiums, once you're at that level, my work is done. You won't need me anymore. You get to that level of income on a steady, ongoing basis through good days, bad days, good weeks, bad weeks, good months, bad months. You bring in $30,000 a month in option premium, I've done my job. And you're now moving forward. You don't necessarily have to hang out with me anymore because... Hey, man, I'm bringing in a 1000 bucks a day, 30 days a week, 30 days a month. Thank you very much, Bruce. Appreciate it. I'll see you around. Well, 
it doesn't work that way. There are people here who do bring in over 30,000 a month in option payment and they don't go anywhere. Um, why? Because why would you leave these folks right here? Why would you leave this gang? The folks on this channel who, uh, you notice their names are in green there. They have a little avatar beside their name. These are the members of this channel. We have one of the best families on YouTube, bar none, no question about it. Um, there's a solid group here that uh, really help each other and we compare notes. Why would you want to leave them? But for me, what people say to me, I started writing options, Bruce, and I'm bringing in $1,000 a month. I'm bringing in $1,500. All right. I just wrote a bunch of calls and I brought in $1,800. <clears throat> I'm going, yes, yes, this is great. This is fantastic. Because the first couple of thousand a month to make are the hardest. Uh, you've gone over a whole bunch of hurdles to get there. You've had the nerves, the 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 the, the wonder, uh, the the stress. The help. yeah, this is huge. Um, but the job ain't done yet. We're we're nowhere near finished here with you guys. I've got to get you to the point where when you write options, you don't even think about it anymore. It's kind of like how you hop on a bike when you go for a bike ride you don't even think about it you just, you just get on the bike and go you remember when you were kids we used to ride bikes all the time i don't know if, is that still a thing with children nowadays I'm not sure i think it is um you know uh, you, you throw you, you put one leg over the other you get a, put on get on the seat and go well that's what option writing has to be option writing has to be for you out there that easy that natural um that's when i've done my job and um you will have done 25 safety checks in your brain the moment you make an uh, uh, enter an order to write calls or buy back calls and write new calls. You'll have done 25 different calculations in your mind just like that. That's how you are become an option writer. To get you from stage one to stage 25 in a three second time frame, that's the trick. That's where that's my job this i think is my job to help get you there advise you to that level once you're at that level and you're bringing in that kind of capital you are in control of your retirement your day-to-day -day life you can look after yourself your family your children your grandchildren you you are now in a whole other level <clears throat> you long ago long ago said goodbye to your bosses if you wanted to say goodbye to your bosses I keep talking about how people can quit their day jobs by hanging around here and learning how to do what we talk about. But you have to want to quit your, your day job. There are folks here who don't want to quit their day jobs. They love their situation. They are very well paid. They find that the amount of work they do is quite tolerable and they haven't got a problem with it. It's okay. There's no standard formula that fits everybody. Everyone is in a different boat. And of course, I'm aware of the fact that on this, in this channel right here with this gang of mine, now 137 of you watching me, there are 20 somethings watching me, 30 something year olds watching me, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and in some cases, the 70s are watching me. There are folks here from all age groups, probably a 50 year gap between young and old watching me on a regular, consistent basis. And that means that I have got. 50 different years to uh, talk to. And inside those 50 different years, there are people that are in a completely different situation. Yeah, I could talk to one 60-year-old here and another 60-year-old over there and another one over there, another one there, and all four are different from each other, completely different. And they have completely different circumstances and a completely different life and different objectives and everything else and this i get it because i was a stockbroker myself i had clients and it was not uncommon for me to have five or six clients all about the same age all in different situations and i had to be able to adapt and help these people adjust their portfolios to fit their needs on an ongoing basis. And I had over 200, 250 clients at one point as a broker. And once you hit 200, 250 clients and you're doing the one-on-one -on -one thing, that's about it. You, you can't go any beyond that. I, I would have needed two assistants to handle 100, 150 of them so that I could get another 100 
uh, and now I'm at 350 clients and I am, my phone just doesn't stop ringing all the time and I need two people to help answer it. It, it would have been intolerable. For some brokerage firms and some stockbrokers over the years, they have had two, three, four, five assistants and they had a thousand clients and they loved it. Um, my personal tastes are not that. No, I, if I'm going to do the one-on-one -on -one, uh, stockbroker client relationship that I was comfortable doing, I couldn't have had, I couldn't have had more than say 60 really active clients with 140, 150 casual clientele. Because in some cases, you open up a brokerage account for a client who says, I want to do my own trading. I know what I want to do. I'm going to use use the conduit to put in trades. And I would say, great, uh, you know, let's open the account. We'll get to meet each other, we'll set this up. <clears throat> and I do have a second person here you can call. If, if, you, if I'm busy on the line, you can get so-and-so to take care of a trade that if you want to get an order in. Um, when I became a branch manager of a brokerage firm, I still had clientele but i restricted it down to about 100 uh people and uh, <clears throat> and uh, i had my secretary and i had my operations manager i had other people to handle any trades that needed to be done in a hurry if i was on a conference call to toronto about managers issues and that type of thing that was then this is now today um there are no brokers you can call like me uh, we almost don't exist anymore. It's, a, it's a, we're almost extinct. Um, those of you who have stockbrokers, uh, you're not watching me. You're probably watching or listening to them, and or theoretically, you have a broker, but they never contact you. So you are watching me <laughs> to see what's going on. And then when you talk to your broker, you ask them questions that your broker can't understand. Where are you getting this from? How, how do you know about option writing? How do you know about uh, what interest rates are doing in the UK? How do you know? that uh, the uh, the uh, the US uh, euro exchange rate is as such and such and interest rates in uh, the UK are this and the interest rates in Canada are that how do you know all this stuff uh, what are you doing um, and you tell them and they don't listen and they go okay well it's great talking to you I'll see you later because they've got other people to call now um, yeah things have changed uh, things have really changed um, but I've got to get you guys to 30000 a month in income. Uh, that's what I have to do. That's my job. I, I've got to get you up there. And then I can truly say to myself, okay, well, I got that one figured out. We got that one there. We got that one there. We got that one there. And the turnover begins. I start losing viewers who don't need me anymore or will watch me very occasionally now because they're so busy making money. And then I have the newbies coming in that are from ground floor. And here we go. And everyone in between. And since I started this channel as a live presenter, June, January 2021, and here we are in November 2022, uh, I have people in various stages of this earnings curve with me. And uh, if you're in the, uh, you know, the zero to 5,000 level, uh, you're still a rookie. Although you may not feel like it. Um, if you're in the five to 10,000 range, you're kind of, graduated out of grade one, two into three, four. And if you're over 10,000 uh, towards 10 and 30,000, you're on your way, but there are still times where you make mistakes and you still you know, get glitches and hiccups along the way. And we'll work with you on that. There is no time frame uh, to get you to the 30,000 level. There is no like, oh, it's, it's six months to do this and it's seven months and 12 months you do that. And then 18 months you do that and 24. No, this is not like a university course where, you know, we have a four-year program with a four-year master's degree and then you're on your way. Some of you will get to zero to 30,000 in six months. Some of you will do it in five years. Some of you will never do it. And it all, again, depends on your personal circumstances. And then there are those of you who join me <clears throat> because something happened in your family and now you have assets to manage. Weren't expecting that, and not so soon, but it happened. And all of a sudden, there's this pressure on you. And all of a sudden, you're sitting on whatever you're sitting on. You're going, I don't know how to handle this stuff. I've, I've never done this before. And you happen to be watching me, or you got referred to me somehow, some way. You watched me for a few weeks, and you thought, I got to talk to this guy because uh, uh, I don't know what to do. I, I, I know what I'd like to do, but I don't know how to get there. And... Uh, 
that's when you reach out to me for a one-on-one -on -one session with me. We chat. <clears throat> Whether you're a $3,000 a month option generator, money generator from option writing, trying to get the five to 6,000 or whether you're at eight, trying to get the 20 or you're at you know 50, you can't write an option to save your soul. You really don't know how to get off the ground. Uh, you've, you've, you've been here a couple of weeks, couple of months, you're gonna contact me for a one-on-one -on -one and say, help me, help me. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you are, where you've been, where you wanna get to. There may come a time where you might say, I got to sit down with this guy for an hour and he, he makes Sundays available for one-on-ones. I'm going to find the time to uh, secure him and uh, get, get in front of this guy and chat with him about my situation because I got a family like you wouldn't believe. I got a world. You're not going to believe the crap I'm looking at here. Oh man, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and others of you are, you got it together. It's all good. I'm very comfortable in my skin. I'm very comfortable in my situation. <clears throat> when I just talk to Bruce and uh, get his thoughts on uh, what I'm thinking about and where I think I'm headed, and um, this will be just great. And we do these. I do these one-on-ones from A to Z, and there are times where uh, some folks come to me who feel they have no idea what they're doing, and they realize, oh, I do have an idea what I'm doing. Actually, I'm actually not doing too bad. And then I get others who come to me feeling pretty good about themselves. And then they, within 15 minutes, they go, I don't know, Jack Squat. This guy just brought up stuff I hadn't even thought about before. And that's my job. That was my job. I'm kind of like the Ed Brimley guy, that Ed Brimley character uh, on uh, in that movie, The Firm. You know, no one knows where's ever left The Firm alive. He was the security officer, played the bad guy. I always loved Ed Brimley. He did those, didn't he do those Quaker Oak commercials? I mean, they were delightful. And then here he is, the bad guy in the firm. Uh, but uh, the one line was uh, <clears throat> uh, the one line was uh, from Gene Hackman. Uh, what, what is it you do here? Uh, he, he was like, what, what is it you actually do here? And he says, um, I I, uh, I get paid to think about um, uh, I get I get paid to think about things when there's nothing to think about. <laughs> Or something like that. He, he's paid to look for problems when there are no problems. Uh, that that's why that's my job. My job is to be on top of this stuff. And I always love that line. Um, and he'd look and he said, "What do you think I do here?" And the guy said, "Frankly, I sometimes I don't know." Uh, great show, great movie. Have you ever seen the movie The Firm? Great, I loved it. And uh, Gene Hackman and, and Tom Cruise and Ed Brimley and others. Uh, Jason Robarts was in that movie. I believe it was Jason Robarts. Loved it. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, had some really good one-liners in there. Anyway, um, I'm your buddy. Um, if you need a one-on-one -on -one, uh, in private, send me an email. Uh, send me an email right here. Uh, you should find it down below in the link, but there it is right there, brucefromerthotmail.com, and say, hey, I'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one private session with you. Um, I'm available this Sunday or, or, you know, what, what, what's, what time can you do this or whatever, or I need to see you. Can I do a meeting with you at 10 in the morning, Sunday or noon, Sunday or two in the afternoon, Sunday, Eastern time. Those are the three times I have every week and we'll lock you in for a session and, um, we'll get together and, uh, you want to do it on your own. You want to do it with your significant other. Um, I've had, I've had two people together at the same time and just, you know, whatever you want. We'll go over it. Um, we'll help figure it out and um, take you to hopefully another level. If you want to know how to write stock options and, you know, say good, say potentially say goodbye to the life you've been leading. That includes working too much, too long and too hard for others for not enough compensation. You want to really get control of your life and you think there's a chance that you might be able to write options that can take you to that level. Here's how you get there. Um, go to this website. That's my website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca, Canadian website. You'll find the lessons there. You'll find that I have uh, put together, now it's what, 14 classes I've put together? There's the home page. And then, then you take, click on the tab. It says classes, and you'll get this. And then you scroll down, and there's lesson number one, lesson number two. These are now 150 bucks a piece. Don't be fooled by that $100 price down there. They've gone up in price. Uh, they're now $150 each. But there they are. Uh, check them out. Um, 
and uh, take one at a time. Start with number one. Uh, people ask me, what, which, which one should I start with? Uh, start with number one. Uh, it's about two hours long, and then number two, and then number three, and number four. You will learn all kinds of little gems all the way along this thing. And uh, at the end of the journey, uh, by the time you get to class 14, you'll kind of catch up to the folks who are here all the time. Uh, you'll have been taught by this guy right here what's going on and how to do what you're doing. Um, and uh, you'll be a long way down the highway. And uh, uh, you'll understand that state bids save lives. So you'll figure that out. Uh, but then you will um, start writing options, start making some dough, and maybe you can do this from time to time. You'll take a cruise and head down here to a place like the Cayman Islands where the where the movie The Firm was uh, centered around. Maybe you can go here. Uh, you know, maybe you can you can be on one of these ships. And uh, instead of being in an inside cabin with no window, <clears throat> no window, maybe you can grab a, a cabin with a balcony. Uh, take one of those Disney cruises. There's a Disney ship in the middle there. <clears throat> grab your kids. Grab your grab your significant other and and and, and grab a cabin, a Disney a Disney balcony cabin. The kids will be gone all day long with the activities that those uh, folks organize for the kids. And you and mom or you and dad will uh, head to the adult-only resort area on top of that ship over there and be pampered by the staff, knowing that this guy got you there. He got you there. Oh, how good is that? And, you know, if, if this guy can help you make dough, then maybe, uh, you know, you and your significant other, just like me and my Jennifer and look like wife, can go out on the town uh, and really enjoy yourself and, and have a good time. Uh, what's wrong with that? Nothing. Or you, you could get all dressed up and really help yourself to a good time. Yeehaw! Or maybe come down to Palm Desert and join us. Uh, why don't you guys come on down to Palm Desert for the winter and uh, hang out where we like to hang out. This this is my kind of place right here. Uh, yeah, this is this is what it's all about, baby. Uh, I may not be golfing, but I'm watching them. Uh, and I got my pool and my hot tub back there. And a couple of neighbors here and about. And uh, palm trees everywhere instead of pine trees. What's wrong with this picture? Absolutely nothing is wrong with this picture. Uh, is there anything wrong with this picture? There's a cruise ship for you. What's wrong with that? Well, nothing if you like it. If you like that kind of uh, activity and what have you, you got you got teenagers uh, that you want to go traveling with. Hey, here's what you do: bring them on a ship. Um, yeah, they can't get out of town. Uh, they're going to be on the ship somewhere. But uh, I'll tell you right now, with the water slides and stuff, if you got 10, 12, 14 year olds, oh my god, have you got yourself a situation all set up? You don't have to be one of these guys. You don't have to be working in uh, downtown Manhattan on the whatever floor of a structure. And sit in front of all these damn machines. And you're not gonna do that. You don't have to do that. Your life is in your hands if you're an option writer. Your market is on the phone, it's on a on a cell phone. And um, you know what you'll do is you'll you'll turn to Rugman for help if you need it. Rugman is here to protect you and guide you along the way. Don't 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 be one of those silly people out there that steps on Rugman's shag carpet cape because they, they think they're all safe sitting on that cape and they dig their toes in holding these stupid stocks and not writing options all of a sudden yoink rug man takes care of that and uh, only option writers win in this market what can i say if you make a lot of money uh and you're at home all the time maybe you'll get yourself a puppy maybe you'll pick up a puppy and you and your puppy will play all day long and you'll say come on let's go for a walk let's go outside and play and let's go for a the puppy go, oh, okay, let's go. Yeah, okay. You could do that, or you could get a cat. Yeah, uh, you could get a cat. The cat won't listen to you. It'll just do whatever they want. Or, or maybe you'll just go outside, uh, you know, you'll go traveling and you'll you'll go see some fantastic uh, firework shows like well, this Nice. Uh, there's a whole world out there at your beck and call. You just have to want it. Um, anyway, thank you everybody for being here. It's uh, 24 minutes until we open for trading today. Um, thank you for, uh, for those of you, uh, you know, popping in through here and seeing me and, uh, hanging out. Thank for these thumbs ups. Larry Titus, buddy. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, 
Fantastic uh, that you're here. Um, hello, everyone from John Anderson. Alberto's here. Dude is here. Lorraine is here. How you doing, guys? Everyone's here. Constantine, I'm thumbs up 57. Uh, financial mischief. Good uh, Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone here in the U.S. had a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving for the rest of the world. I hope yesterday was the best Thursday of the year for you. Wing Commander, hey, I'm 64. Thumbs up. Franz is here. Hello, gang. David R. Doubtful. Okay, Dave. Uh, John, uh, let's uh, my, let, let, let's buy some more junk day today. Uh, dude says, my aunt works for the Fed, and she's mostly tight-lipped about what's going on there. She did seem to think inflation is going to continue in the 2024, and it'll continue to be a problem. There you go. Uh, dude, new goal, 30000 a month. Let's go. Matthew, uh, fifth, number 58, thumbs up. Good morning. It looks like the Fed has not been doing uh, QT. I looked at the Fed balance sheet, and it's not being reduced. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to see it at the beginning because when you start with ten trillion dollars, you know, offloading, uh, you know, so many millions a week, it, it, it takes a while to take effect. Anyway, thank you all, uh, Jr. Uh, okay, I I finally saw it. Someone writing on you who do you you who Yahoo Finance finally saying it's a short sighted to think there will be no recession. And inflation going down. Now, how long have we heard that here? There you go. I've been doing that for, I don't know how long. Nazareth, number 69. Aurora, number 70. Thank you. Jimmy Wilkes, number 72. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. The thumbs ups are coming in. Sell my house fast, Upper Marlboro. Alberto, wait, what will we always need to hear? Your voice is the voice of reason. Um, JR, Alberto, just plain fun. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, uh, Alberto, Constantine, mm, you got a camera in my home? The laugh a lot. He has definitely made a huge difference in my life. I believe I surpassed that several times. Uh, get that moolah, get that moolah, brother. Uh, there you go, everybody. I can't fathom thirty thousand a year now, thirty thousand a month yet. That figure just blows my mind right now. Um, rock and roll kids, welcome all. Uh, bringing in thirty thousand a month sounds nice, but there are bad days too. You can lose thirty thousand a month just as quickly, says Bill. That's why I say consistently. Uh, Bobby on the road to Niagara Falls, thumbs up. Alberto, they'll never, ne coin never. I I only write, so I might get a sign, but a thirty thousand loss can't have. Constantine, have a great vacation there, Bob. Alberto, uh, Bobby, hopefully the Canadian side, the New York side is yuck. <laughs> Karen D, I'm number eighty six. Uh, Larry Titus, kittens. Flint Creek, uh, here, I'm here, um, I'm here, says JR. Uh, Sean and Wendy, God's amazing, number 87, thumbs up. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Welcome, all of you guys. Uh, Gaudi, no one in the history of my family has made even close to 30000 a month. Pulse Guitar, happy Thanksgiving Day to everybody. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, you know, you got to, you can't think about making 30000 a month until you make twenty nine, and you can't think about making twenty nine a month until you make twenty eight. And so on and so on. And uh, many of you here had no idea you could write options, period, uh, months ago. You had no, uh, no clue that that could ever have been a possibility for you guys. And uh, then you found me. You stumbled across my, my channel. And uh, you began to listen and, 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 and you know learn what was happening. And you began to... You thought, well, I'll, I'll take a class of his. I'll, I'll do a class, and we'll see if there's anything to this. And you, you did a class, and uh, some of you, you know, you were here a couple of years, a year and a half ago, and you w came to one of my live classes. So you you realize, oh, he's going to do class number three this weekend. Well, I'm going to register and join that class. Uh, you know, so it's like watching him during the day, kind of. Why don't I? Why don't I just you know join this guy? And so that's what was ha what would happen is people uh, started taking the classes with the remainder of uh, you know, all my viewers and all of a sudden uh, you're hooked and um, you're 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 realizing oh I get it now this this is serious stuff I I'm I'm like a I'm kind of like an institutional uh, investor almost I'm like a, I'm like a hedge fund operator except in my own you know little size of course um, and that's what began to happen for some of you folks. By the way, we got 91 thumbs ups. Thanks, everybody. And uh, people started to say, you know, I, uh, Bruce, I wrote my first option. I sold it for uh, $350. Uh, and then a couple days later, Bruce, I, I just bought back. 
that option I wrote the other day, you, you know that three hundred fifty dollar option I wrote the other. I just bought it back for two hundred twenty five dollars. I, I just made one hundred twenty five bucks. I didn't have to sell my stock. I didn't have to buy anything. I didn't have to. I didn't have to eat anything. I didn't have to take any pills. All I did was I sold these contracts. This contract and, and it went down. I bought it back and I get to keep the change. This is pretty good, you know. I if I could do this with ten contracts instead of one. I'd make $1,250, and this is like three days. Wait a minute. $1,250 in three days? That's over $400 a day. That's $2,000 a week. That's $8,000 a month. You're talking about making $30,000 a month, and then, oh, I get it now. I'm getting this. I see where you're coming from because thirty thousand a month isn't that much money in the options business. That's what I'm trying to tell you, and it isn't on one trade. It's not like you sell one thing and buy one thing back and you make thirty thousand dollars. It's not actually that way at all. What it can be, it can be a series of option rights that you make on either one stock or multiple stocks, at a multiple number of stock buy option buybacks with rewrites because you're always writing. And it adds up to thirty thousand a month or more, and you realize I'm not on the. I don't need any one stock to make it work for me. I can diversify this option writing business across a whole bunch of different stocks, and that doesn't put my eggs in one basket. I like this. On the other hand, there are those of you who go, no, no, I love it with one stock. I love just following one stock, keep an eye on the market, work on my one stock because I know this thing. Great. What whatever you like, it can be done. But thirty thousand a month is very doable, and there are those of you out there who watch me and watched me and will find me, who don't know, you already have more than enough capital at your disposal in various assets that you can now rejigger to generate income from option writing that can take you to thirty thousand a month now, and you don't know, and if only someone will tell you. But you're not going to get a stockbroker calling you out of the blue going, hello, Mr. Jones. Uh, listen, um, I'm a, I'm a stockbroker here in your hometown. And um, I heard from uh, so-and-so, your bowling buddy or, uh, you know, someone who knew you. And I have a feeling that uh, if uh, we, we put together an option writing program for you, I think we can bring in 30000 a month for you. Um, would that interest you for a, for a session? It's a conservative strategy, uh, you know, it's kind of like what mutual funds do and hedge funds and pension funds. Would, would you like to talk about that? You never get in that call. You never, ever, ever, never will get that phone call. Never. There's no one, there's no one's going to call you with that. Those of us who could have talked to you about this, I'm 67, okay? The guys who were 15 years older than I was when I was in the business, they're 80, to 90, they're 82. Okay, I, I'm even having trouble doing the math. When it gets that high, I get scared. 82. Yeah, these guys are gone. Okay. They don't they don't exist anymore. They're either six feet under. They're in a retirement home drooling in a wheelchair in the corner over there. Uh, they don't remember their first name. Um, they're sharp as get up, but they're out golfing and having a wonderful time. Um, and uh, you're not you're never gonna hear from them. You're never gonna talk to them, never gonna talk to you. Uh, never ever are you gonna get this advice. There are no hot shop 35-year-old stockbrokers out there. 40-year-old stockbrokers out there, master's degree in economics and everything else who are experts in option writing that are going to contact you and say, Mr. Jones, uh, I understand that you have, uh, uh, you know, you have some investments. And you're not very happy with your returns. Uh, can I show you some ideas over here? Um, when, when, how about this? How about I come to your office and uh, I'll stop at the Starbucks on the way over. What, what, what drink do you like? Oh, you like a latte? I'll bring a latte over. From Starbucks, and let's have a chat. The first one's on me. You turn the coffee machine on for the second one. How about that? And I'll meet you at how about the seven o'clock tonight after dinner? Is that okay? <clears throat> and you'll go, Yes, that's when the wife likes to watch CSI, and I don't care for it. That would be the perfect time to chit chat. Let's go down to the rec room and have a chat. There you go. You're never getting that phone call. <laughs> You're never going to get not a chat. It's not happening. Uh, welcome to 2022, where you're on your own. And that's the end of that. And if you want answers to questions, you go to the frequently asked questions section of your investment firm.
good luck with that. You, you need help, call the 800 number, and someone from Indonesia or the Philippines or Sri Lanka or I don't know where they're located will talk to you. Or you'll get some $15 an hour person uh, answering phones after hours. Um to talk to and they won't have a clue what the hell you're after hey, you want to talk about writing options as a strategy for investment purpose oh god thank you no 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 okay uh there you go uh welcome one and all it's great to see you all um uh, charlie i'm almost there i'm almost at 30 dollars a month i'm there baby it's happening yeah the last two years i worked at amazon i made thirty thousand a month that was really nice Tiff, let's start with making 500 a month consistently and working to 1,000 from there and from there and from there. DQ, I'm number 91. Uh, Alberta, so I used to wait um, uh, to use the premiums. I finally used the premiums to buy more shares and write more covered calls. X premium of $500, example, $500, I buy another 100 so far, and boom, another contract, Alberta, immediately. And uh, if in the money, I'll buy back a couple of contracts, roll those up for more premium, which allows you to buy back more and roll them up. Alberto never stops. Uh, example, 11 Teslas in the money. Uh, um, oh, I'll buy back two. Roll for the premiums. Use that premium to buy back more. Tio is the goat. There you go. Simple math. Applied, although I still consider myself the idiot nephew. Um, Alberto, enough of my rant. Good luck, my bagel familia. Right on, buddy. Love you, Alberto. You're doing great. Um, you would a man, says Kareem. Um, JJ, no need to apologize. Bertie, thanks for the advice. Exactly, my friend. Uh, if Alberto can do it, anyone can do it. He'll admit to that. Um, no question about it. The thing that uh, will shock you uh, if you do get into option writing is how quickly you can grow the uh, the revenue. Uh, that's the shocker. I have viewers here who who uh, used to just write options on stock only. Now they write options on options that they own because they're buying deep in the money calls using the 90-10 rule we talked about. And they're buying very conservative, very deep in the money, well-priced contracts, and using that as their vehicle to write options. And they can write more options with the amount of capital they have if they do this program, poor man cover call program, than buying the stock directly, which has turned people's thinking completely into a 180, where they're going, I thought it would take five years or three years to be able to get enough shares, to be able to write enough options to make enough income. Now... I'm, I'm bringing in money now that I didn't think I'd bring in for two or three years. I'm doing it. I'm getting that today. Uh, this has changed the outlook completely. And of course, income begats more income because as Alberta was saying, I will buy additional shares or others will say, I will buy additional in the money calls to write more options now on top of the options I got going. And all of a sudden you're going from five contracts to eight to 10 to 14 to 18 to 24 and income is coming in at a faster pace than you thought it would come in and it's rising every month every quarter dramatically things are really evolving here quickly um and i'm excited for every single one of you guys this bear market tailor-made for option writing look at the dow we're up 12 points with 10 minutes to go that's it uh, we're down four on the s p we're down 50 on nasdaq we used to worry. Uh, there were two years ago, every viewer here would go, oh, the market looks like it's going down. Oh, no, I'm going to lose money today. Oh, geez. Today, the viewers of this channel, look at this market going, this is great. This is fantastic. Look at the GameStop. It's down 18 cents. Uh, this is fantastic, man. My GameStop is down 18 cents, and I got contracts expiring next week or next month or whatever. They're losing value. These contracts I wrote uh, that I wrote are depreciating out. They're suffering from the George Costanza shrinkage problem. And I'm getting rich because of this. I love this a lot. Um, yes, indeed, kids. Uh, we find ways to uh, enjoy money. Whether the market goes up or down doesn't matter. Uh, you got to love this. Um, Yo, so what can I say? Uh, thank you all for being here. Hooray, the market is down. Neat, neat, neat. Nick, uh, Maury, I'm number 105, Bruce. You have now broken 100 thumbs ups on the show. 
I, I see 107 now have come through. Thank you, those of you who have been able to uh, give me a thumbs up so far today. I, I can't uh, appreciate, I can't express how appreciative I am for that. We like to get to 200 thumbs ups for the morning show, so we need 93 more to come on in. If any of you out there can find that thumbs up button, please nail that thing for me and give us a little momentum going into the opening. We have nine minutes till we open for trading. There's 173 of you here. 111 thumbs ups have now come in. Uh, we need 89 more and we've got 200 thumbs ups today. And I know that there are at least 89 of you or more that could easily do it without any trouble at all. Please hit that thumbs up button. 114 are here now. Here they come. Thank you all so much for helping out. Let the uh, let the folks know who are home today that are not working that we exist. There are people out there who don't know we are we have a channel that uh, that we are actually here. There are innocent people out there who are getting screwed over by their bosses, getting screwed over by their their fellow workers and all this stuff. And there are there are single moms out there. Um, there are divorced couples out there. There are happy couples out there. There are, are hardworking husbands and wives and wives and wives and husbands and husbands and everything in between who are trying to make a go of it. And uh, there's a lot of people out there who are just getting shellacked with inflation, higher interest rates, and uh, an economy that's not working for them. And yet they happen to have stock in a savings a brokerage investing account. I don't know what. Uh, they got ETFs somewhere. They got some kind of mutual fund. I don't know. They've got assets that are not performing. They have assets that are getting shellacked with this bloody market, with, you know, down 30% on some of these exchanges. They've been caught in a vortex of crap, and they are getting destroyed. These are folks that, with a little guidance from yours truly, could become shareholders of uh, certain stocks we love to follow and could become option writers of stocks that we talk about all the time, and they could be joining the party. And some of these folks uh, could be could be quite the difference maker with regards to the size of their portfolios. Uh, and you never know. Uh, we, through the thumbs up campaign that I keep asking, there might be a certain number of people who join this channel over the next six months who now bring in hundreds of additional viewers, thousands of additional viewers through whatever connections they have, blogs they're part of, vlogs, I don't know. Um, and the next thing you know, we don't have 182 people watching first thing in the morning. We have 1,800 people watching in the morning. And uh, I mentioned to you 1,800, I think you should want to think about buying ATIP right now because it's on a super discount. And the next thing you know, the, the volume is a million shares on the day. <laughs> the stock's up 15 cents a piece. You never know. Um, the power of this channel is already evident in some cases. Uh, a lot of you are, 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 are noticing that, that this channel does sometimes have an impact on stocks. Have you noticed your Rocket Lab this morning, everybody? You're up 14 cents at 4.54. There was good news on uh, Wednesday night, NASA. They signed a contract with NASA to launch some satellites for them. Uh, nice stuff. Uh, SoFi, that should be purchased big time. It should be bought up. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're hopefully looking for a good run here. Um, what else is going on out there? Yeah, the ATIP is 53 cents. We're up two and a half this morning. How about that? Got a little movement there. Um, what else is going on? Uh, I know Apple's off. Goldman is off. Cisco is down a penny. Tesla up two bucks. ARK Invest in innovation down 12 cents. Microsoft down 89. Bed Bath Beyond is up three cents, I think. Uh, Pfizer down 11. HPQ down 27. Carvana down 14. Alphabet down 23. Amazon down 23. Who here is crying that some of these stocks are off today? Nobody. No one is crying on this channel. And we should bring more folks in who don't have to cry either that will rub their hands and go, oh, <laughs> The market is backing off today. Oh, these contracts I wrote are plummeting. <laughs> I'm going to buy these calls back for pennies on the dollar. Oh, I love this. That's the attitude we have around here. We need more of those folks to join the party, pal. Uh, so, yeah, hit the thumbs up for me. 
Let them know. Uh, 124 thumbs ups are in now. We need 76 more to get to 200. It's just a target number I have. It's nothing personal. I just want 200 thumbs ups every morning show if I can get it. And it just lets the YouTube know, hey, promote this channel to those people who are desperate to find a way to make money in a bear market. That's all I'm saying. Uh, it could well be that you putting a thumbs up on this show indirectly gets a relative of yours, someone related to that you haven't talked to in decades, to find us and become a member and help themselves with income which helps other extended family members of yours you don't even know you you, you now you'll hear about this a year from now go i had no idea i had no idea that so and so and so and so so and so that are related to, we we're also watching this guy we had i can't wait to see them next thanksgiving or at a family picnic for july 4th or whatever uh, you never know it's a small world you know Help your fellow man get richer. Help this channel get larger. Hit the thumbs up button. Uh, the more people that do what we're doing, the more powerful we get. And I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. Uh, that's just my that's just my thought. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, for being here. Uh, let's keep it going. Uh, three minutes to go. Um, Alberto says you're all welcome. As per uncle's advice, never fear the upside. Or downside, just let yourself let yourself get a sign. Don't worry about it. It's all good. DH, I'm number 115, buddy. In Yoink, we trust, says Nick. Uh, right on split. I was still looking through the last show, and you will get me for sure to 30000 in a month. In that case, I'll make enough for a year. Or when I'll rent three or four apartments, then I'll be enough uh, for a half one. <laughs> Spare, you're going to make tons of money. You have no idea how much money you're going to make. Uh, Kareem is laughing out loud. Flair, and good morning to you all. Hope everybody had a joy an enjoyable three-day spicy Android. I have to go back and watch the Poor Man Cover Call class again and again. I keep forgetting how this works. And if I get assigned on the Poor Man Cover, I will lose that contract. No, you will not. You will not lose that contract. No, you'll just be short the stock. You'll just buy the stock back and write another contract. you got to watch that show. Uh, the Beach, why nice. China rant at the early alert show. Uncle Bruce, that point about the World Cup was revealing. Splair, I was probably number 116, by the way. I go to Spire, gang. Spire! Uh, Alberto, um, Splair, and all you got to trust is, is process. As an engineer, it, it has to be logical, so to absorb. This free money makes no sense. But I've called my attorney and CPA to ensure it is legal. And it is. Uh, w. Walters, 120 thumbs up. Good morning, everybody. Kareem, I don't think you lose the poor man lung position. That is correct. Uh, Alberto's laughing. Everyone's laughing. I was having a good time. Thank you all for being here. We're a minute away from opening. Larry's about to hit the the bells. Pulse guitar. Um, where is that thing that I had that I was supposed to have? I don't have it. Uh, Uncle Bruce says, you know, I haven't gotten the poor man cover call classes. If assigned, you gain difference between long call, short call, and premium collected. Subtract the cost, purchase total profit. Um, okay, you you own a hundred shares of GameStop. You wrote a contract on GameStop. You brought in four dollars, four hundred bucks. You got taken out at twenty seven dollars. Okay, twenty six dollars. You now have twenty six hundred cash. The four hundred cash you keep. You now have three thousand cash. You're short a hundred shares. You're still long your poor man covered call. You buy back the stock at twenty seven dollars. You keep the three hundred dollars cash. You write a new call for four hundred dollars. Now you have seven hundred cash. Hello, you got a poor man covered call. Seven hundred cash. And you've written a contract. You would love to be reassigned. Here we go. I love it. If correct, sounds like no real risks involved. Hence why it's a conservative strategy. Hello. Yes. Uh, hit the thumbs up button, people. Something's really backing off. I gained some minutes ago. Again, on oil, way on the market. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Larry has hit the bells. And uh, I have to uh, pardon myself for a moment because it looks like I left my telephone in the kitchen. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, don't mind me. Hang on. Don't don't go anywhere, kids. I'll be right with you. I need my phone. Okay, I found it. I'm back. I'm back. Okay, I'm here. Okay, thanks for waiting. I got, I got my phone back. I left it in the kitchen. Um, I'm showing the Dow. I think it's up right now. Uh, we're going to see how this market uh, looks in just a second here. 
Um, let's get this reloaded. Here we go. We're up 56 on the Dow right now. I think that's what it is officially. Um, ATIP at 50.5. I'm not sure if that's actually trading yet. That might have been Friday's close. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, welcome one and all to the show. Here we are. Here we go. Let's see if we can get richer today, everybody. Can we get you richer today? I don't know. We'll see. There's depreciation on your contracts. There's no question about that. We have time whittling them away to nothing. You got to love this. This market is working for you. Uh, that's how this, this bear market works. Okay. Uh, I'm agreeing, by the way, with Alberto. I'll let the short day begin, says Larry. Thank you, Larry, says DQ. Um, okay. Larry from JR. Uh, JR, um, Pulse Guitar. That's about it. It happened to me, and I came out a winner. A small winner, but a winner nonetheless. I just reset the position. Uh, Pulse. Oh, that's sexy. I like this. Pulse. Um, bet the, the naval margin of doing course for PM or Carl. You need margin account. Leave us with uh, some fireworks. Uh, couldn't do it. Slayer. Um, here's a five dollar donation. Five five euros. Uncle Bruce, I will make more money, but only thanks to you, rock and roll buddy. Um, that answer looks way better. Rock and roll, pal. Rock and roll. You're going to get richer, all of you. Um, we're up 49 on the Dow. We're down. Um, I'm not sure if we're down in ATP. Tesla's down 38 cents. Apple's down three bucks. GameStop is up nine cents to 26.79, I think. Uh, we're going to refresh this again. My biggest iPad. 26 uh, 79 26 84 I think we're up about 10 14 cents maybe uh but uh, we have in this market here the Dow up 49 but S&P down 3 and Nasdaq down 53 so we're we're negative on the market right now uh on two of the markets we're down 187 on oil by the way 78 17 dropping on oil um at the moment um Okay, we'll see how this all plays out. Uh, over on SoFi, uh, 459.6, down 6.5 cents, I think. Uh, let me refresh again my, my big-ass iPad as I try to get this to work. Okay, I'm seeing a little dip now. I've got GameStop down 3 cents to 26.67. Uh, SoFi at 459, down 6. HBQ up 7 cents. Amazon down 57. Home Depot up 251, Cisco up 28, Pfizer up 21, Netflix down 450, IBM down a penny, Microsoft up 26 cents, Vanek down a dime. No, Vanek is, sorry, Vanek is, what is it doing? Uh, it's down 154, Adobe down one, uh, down 76 cents, Goldman up 20 cents. Still too early to settle in. I, we're jumping around all over the place, and I don't have exact openings yet as the markets are sort of settling up here. So we'll give it some time to settle in and tell us what they're doing and all will be well and we'll be happy. NASDAQ down 65 points. Um, S&P down four. The Dow looks to be up 60, but I can't tell you if that's real or not. It In the mornings, the first 10 minutes of the day, if it's an active morning or if there's a lot of – there's activity on any one or two or three stocks – the Dow 30, you may have 25 of the stocks open right away and five open in the first five minutes as the market makers kind of get the bid asks all figured out. and They want an orderly open. And so you may have the Dow up 80 points, but you don't have Apple trading yet. You don't have Microsoft trading yet, something like that. So a minute into the day, Apple starts trading and it's down 25 cents. Well, now the Dow isn't up 80 points. It's only up 20 um apple is a dominant stock it's a big heavy influence on markets uh by the time the rest of the market opens up we're we're up 15 points um and now we're trending from there uh it can happen that more some mornings you have 25 stocks up five down and the dow is down on the day to start the day uh it can happen the other way we have a you have the heavy hitters heavy hitter stocks are down the rest of the dow though is substantially higher and we have an up day going and then there are times where all the stocks are up, all the stocks are down, all the stocks are wishy-washy within a quarter of each other doing nothing. It's Every day is a different day. Uh, but right at this second in time, right now, with uh, six minutes into the morning, I got the Dow up 81 points. Uh, I've got S&P down two and a half. That's 500 stocks versus 30 stocks. We're down two and a half. 
And on NASDAQ, 100 stocks in the NASDAQ index were down 62. So what's the market doing? It's mixed. It's a mixed market. We don't have a uniform, uniform up move or a uniform down move. We have some issues higher and lower. And the 30 Dow Jones Industrials, which are made up of the biggest 30 companies, generally speaking, generally. They pay a dividend, generally, they all pay a dividend, generally, some much better than others. That index is up today, but the wow. high-flying NASDAQ 100, which is made up of generally big growth companies, growth stocks that um, are more about earning more income and growing themselves rather than being dividend payers, that market is down. So today, the growth stocks are getting hit. The value stocks are being bought, but in either case, nothing much is going on. We're not up a thousand points on the Dow. We're not down five hundred points on Nasdaq. It's a nothing burger day, and that's what we got going on. All right. Thank you, everybody. Lame duck. I am number one thirty-five on your thumbs up meter, buddy. Uh, Splair, I've shorted thirteen units of oil today uh, from seventy-nine down to seventy-eight or nine, and earlier this day I traded it up to seventy-nine. Somehow, thanks to more. Patience from the options. I'm better in sniping for better gains. Spilling into other investments here. Nick uh, Dumorier, uh, when does this session end today? One o'clock Eastern is when it dies today. Splair Alberta, if you don't join later, enjoy the uh, join the uh, enjoy the long weekend, my friend. Right on. Greetings from Deutschland from uh, Splair. Uh, thank you everybody for uh, for popping in here and hanging out. We have 140 thumbs ups now. I appreciate this. Alberto is saying, I've been a member now for 20 months, and I'm a Gold Bagel member. I got to go. I would say good luck, but luck has no place here. Make that dinero, mula, familia. Play that uh, catchy tune, my money don't jiggle, jiggle, it folds, while you fill your pockets. 20 months as a member. Woohoo! Thank you, Alberto. Love you, buddy. Uh, you have a great weekend if I don't see you the rest of the day today. And we'll catch up with you definitely on Monday. Uh, fantastic all. Thank you so much for these uh, don uh, the, 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 these uh, donations you make, like Spare, but also these these big green bars, these announcements you make about how long you've been here. I only see this on my YouTube um, stock page on the on my on my uh, YouTube uh, channel page. I don't see this announcement that Alberto uh, made on my um, StreamYard page, which is what I watch all the time because it's live up to the moment. But I thank you all so much when you do these uh, these uh, bold uh, green bar announcements. I love it. Thank you all for uh, being here today on, on kind of a holiday type day. It's sort of a, you know, it's one of those days, uh, wishy-washy kind of day. It's a holiday for a lot of people, not for everybody. Uh, Black Friday is what we got today. It's what we have here. Um, and uh, we're on our way. Do you know why they call today Black Friday? It has nothing to do with race or anything like that. The reason today is called Black Friday is traditionally, <laughs> and we're talking up, you know, in the old days, up probably until about 1970, 75, 80, uh, certainly up to 1990, because after 1990, the computer kicked in. But Black Friday means that retailers, like Macy's, uh, Woolworths, Woolco, Walmart, Target, Foot Locker, uh, any retail store. In the old days, retailers, generally speaking, made money starting from today, Black Friday, for the year. Now think about this. You own a retail store and you pay rent every month to your landlord. You pay staff salaries you're paying the power bill paying business taxes insurance paying your auditors you're paying your suppliers you're stocking up your store and it's on friday november the 25th right now this is the day your business has turned the corner and you are now making money for the balance of the year and what you sell from now until the 31st of December, less returns equals your profit for the year. Think about living like that. You think you wonder why retailers are nervous? Uh, they're panicking. 
What about the retailers in Buffalo? Can you imagine if Black Friday today was the day they got six feet of snow? Today of all days? Years ruined. The year would be ruined because Black Friday comes but once a day. People have today off. There are people who have today off. And what are they going to do today? They're going to do the bulk of their Christmas shopping today. Today is the day they do it. If you can't get out of the house to go to your favorite shopping mall, you're going to go online and order online, or you'll do a little shopping next week after work here and there. But the opportunity is lost for the retailers at the local mall or downtown where the snow is piled up on the sidewalk and you can't even walk on the sidewalk. Can you imagine the outside of your store has four feet of snow on it, on your sidewalk? You are done for. Your year is finished. You will not make money this year. You've worked all year to get here only to have that happen. This is why this day is so important for retailers. It's a huge deal. And if you're able to frequent a mom and pop shop today, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday, if you can go and shop at a mom and pop store that you know is a family owned business, you are doing your local community the best good you can. Because if you can help your local retailers thrive, survive, make a couple of bucks, something, these are the folks during the summer that get hit up by all the minor league baseball teams. And they're the ones getting hit up by all the high school students to try to sell chocolate bars for field trips. These are the stores that the kids know they can walk in there and talk to the owner of the business. Have you ever tried to get a donation from a chain store in a shopping mall? There's no one in those chain stores you can talk to because it's got to go to head office. Head office doesn't talk to local charities. Head office talks to national charities, the kind of charities that they can buy advertising space with on a network television broadcast. You want to get funding for your local girl guide thing or boy scout thing, you're not going to get help from a national store. The manager of your Walmart, you can't see that person. That person is unavailable to you. And so where do they go? They go downtown. They go to the strip malls. They go to the mom and pops. These are the places you should be supporting in your community because they're supporting your community. They got kids. They got kids. Their kids are in the baseball league or part of this or part of that or whatever. They're in the high schools. They're in the wherever. Help them help you back. Um, that's what community is all about. Of course, I'm biased because my mom and dad were mom and pop business owners. And, of course, I became one. I became a mom and pop sports store uh, for a number of years. What can I say? Help out. Help us out. There you go. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for your kind attention to that public service announcement. Uh, what can I say? Yep, this is when the, they turn a profit for the year. This is where it happens after 11 and a half months of hell. Um, there you go. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Hello, the Eagle Babe. Welcome to the channel. Uh, uh, what else? Are you staying on until the clothes are sticking to your regular schedule? I haven't decided yet. It all depends on just how nice you are to me today. <laughs> I, I honestly haven't decided what to do today. So I'm on the air right now. I'm here. I'm, well, I'll see, you know. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Uh, a Gonzo Cruiser. You know, I haven't chimed in for a while. Just wanted to say I'm still here. And I'm making money. Laughing out loud. How about that? Fool of a took. Morning, everybody. Happy to be here uh, live. Love the Wednesday primetime show, by the way. I got I, I had a number of compliments on that show. Um, uh, here we go. El Duso had a good Thanksgiving. Rock and roll, Deuce Caboose. How you doing, buddy? Richard, uh, retailers turn profit for the year. Larry, I'm black every Friday. There you go. Uh, Richard, they go in. Um, they go from the into the black from the red. That's right. That is what black friday means my my dad worked in clothing retail he said a whopping 25 percent of their business was done in december a quarter of the year in 30 days that's right that's exactly right 
Uh, my mother was in clothing. My father was in musical instrument sales. Uh, the music store did about the music store would do about a third of its business in December, just December. <clears throat> we saw money come in. I mean, I would, I would, my dad would ask me to come in uh, as soon as I got off school uh, when the holidays started for me. So if, uh, we started holidays on December 18th or 19th. He'd have me in the store right away, especially the last weekend before Christmas. And he'd help, he'd have me in there, make sure no one's stealing anything. And, Dust the dust the guitars and you know keep the floor clean and uh, that re that cash register of his would be re just going. I mean, you know, my dad is constantly bringing in money, and I'd just be going, "Wow, this is great! I wish it was like this all year round." Um, and uh, you know, in in the summertime, I remember it was a big deal in the summertime if the store could break like uh, five hundred dollars in sales in one day. This is this is nineteen sixty nine seventy seventy one. So that's like four or five grand today, which is still not a lot for a retail store, but nonetheless. But in the winter time, in Christmas time, the the, the music store would bring in a thousand dollars a day, and I go, oh my god, thousand dollars came in the cash register today at the music store. My dad's house is thirty five thousand dollars. The house that we live in is thirty five thousand. He brought in a thousand today, and you think, oh, that's that's on un that's unfathomable money. <laughs> and my dad would just would just, it would just water off a duck's back for him because he's just going, we have to do this much now. We have to have these kinds of days or we have to close the store. And that to me, that was unthinkable because I loved working at my dad's music store. We can't close this. This is a great place to hang out for a kid like me. I'm 15 years old. We can't shut this place down. But uh, yeah, Christmas was, it was all about December, all about December. And make or break. Jennifer, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing okay. Um, hanging right in there. Uh, are people. You, are you hearing the wind gust? No, I, I didn't hear it. Uh, people were asking me today about um, how long I'm going to be on the air today oh, because we have a shortened day today. And I haven't decided. I haven't decided how long I'm going to be yeah, on. You're just going to wing it. I, I, thought, I figured <laughs> I'd just wing it. Um, so at the market closes at one? Yeah, one o'clock Eastern, which is eleven o'clock yeah. my time, and so it's now about just short of eight. So that's another three hours before we are done for the day. So do I, do I shut down like I normally shut down, and then come back quickly with a short break and come back for the last hour, or do I just go through it? Yeah. In one go, I haven't decided. I don't know. I, It'll depend on how tired you get. Kareem asked me just that question. Here. Yeah, Kareem was asking, "Hey, how long you were?" I said to Kareem, "Depends how you treat me." <laughs> Just throw it right back out of my. What am I gonna do? I don't know. Um, Ma Mandu number five, one hundred forty-four thumbs up right now. Uh, I think maybe it's also on the thumbs up meter. If I can't get two hundred thumbs ups, maybe well, I should just pack it in. It's going to be a very light day. Well, you know, people have a food coma. Today. No, no excuse. People should be here. They should come here, give me a thumbs up, and then leave. We're at one hundred fifty-one thumbs up. So what's the market today? Uh, <laughs> and our oil is up. Well, the Dow is up 95, but the S&P is down 4, and NASDAQ down 67. So it's a mixed bag. Any volume anywhere? And oil is now up 35 yeah. cents. It was down a buck 50 15 minutes ago. So we're, yeah. just, we're just... It's that day. There's not... Without the right volume, you get wall swings. Yeah. yeah. It's a volatile day it's to day. Volatile day. And I, I see you've opened the window. You're going to let the sun in. Well, you know, I... I, I you guys don't understand this little office here. There's a window here that is generally closed off to the outside because I don't want the sunshine coming in to uh, shine this this no. No, this side of the <laughs> from here. It would mean I'm completely glared on this side and not this side. You'd be the classic uh, angel on one side because you'd be glowing on one side and then the devil on the other side. There you go. And so, but we took I took it down because our sun. The sun's angle now in Calgary, it's so low. It's way crazy. up north, it is so low now. If you go to the North Pole, it, there's almost no sunshine at all. Yeah. Uh, it's dark all day long because the sun doesn't break the horizon. Well, here in Alberta, same thing. We're, we're very low. So at the height of our day, the sun is in your eyes. Oh, when, yeah. If you're driving in, in the direction of the sun, it's in your eyes. Even with the shade down, it's like no, no, a it's real pain. Yeah. 
Uh, if it's coming from the side people window, one it, hand it's on the wheel and one. Yeah, people are driving like this. It, it's it, it's a pain in the butt. So it's we actually like we like cloudy days because the cloud keeps the brightness of the sun it's out of your eyes out. if you're driving, right? Our is blowing away we, today. Have, we have wind going and we have and temperatures are going to start dropping again. We were in the 50s, mid 50s a yeah, couple days ago. it's 10 right now. It's 10 and it's going to go so to minus 5. 50 degrees now and it's going down to 25, and 20 then degrees. And on Sunday it's going to be by the time we leave town, which we haven't announced when exactly we're leaving, but by the time we leave town, it's going to be really cold again. And that's going to feel so great. It's going to feel so wonderful well, to leave had, town. We had really cold a couple of weeks ago. We did, and we didn't like it. Uh, we <laughs> hate it. Uh, and so we got the and break. The snow. But the snow has been melting, kind of melting. And the, uh, the rain yeah. and snow. Yeah. And the ice. Oh, yeah. Makes it treacherous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who are your Steelers playing this weekend? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I I do know. I just can't. DQ, tell you DQ. Where are you? Alert, DQ. We need DQ. Alert. Alert. Where's DQ? Who, uh, are they who are they playing this weekend? Is it a home game and away game? What's up? Uh, anyway, we're just gonna wonder what happens here. Don't know. Larry says, I have today off. I Rock know. and roll, buddy. Uh, so far, it's fun again. Says Deuce Caboose. 457 down nine cents. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, Slayer's going Newman. I don't know why he's saying Newman, but he's New saying Newman. New Newman. Hello. In this Newman. province, we have um, the ability to choose when we want to take uh, Remembrance Day off. So some places are closed on Remembrance Day, but a lot of people save it for. Uh, Christmas, so they have an extra day at Christmas. Yeah, and I know down in the states, like Larry said, he has today off. Yeah, a lot of companies just close today <laughs> because they know there's going to be one person showing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah they, they they added in. Um, it's not worth it. Uh, here's some comments. Sell my house fast enough for Marlboro. I saw more than one commercial on TV yesterday advertising the Jim Cramer Investment Club. 40% uh -huh. discount annual membership is $300. For what? Crappy opinions? He's asking. Isn't that interesting? Um, if you join this well, channel, Black Friday, right? if you join my channel as a Gold Bagel member, it's $25 a month and you can cancel anytime you want. Uh, but for that, so that's you do get something. I mean, you get the, the early alert show five days a week when we're open five days a week. And the Wednesday prime time show. That's six extra shows you get with me exclusively per week. That's 24 but extra per you month. Don't have any, you don't know, have an array of buttons that makes noise. I don't have a bunch of buttons that make noise. That's true. Uh, but, you know, what can I say? Um, here's something else going on here. Hang on. I can try right. poking you in different places and see what different noises mm, you make. Gonzo Cruiser. Uh, <laughs> looks like I'm going to Grand Cayman on January. Is there anything I need to need to uh, put on I must see list oh, is there anything I have to put on the must see list I don't know. are you you're probably going in as a are you going as a cruise ship passenger yeah, Gonzo okay. are you there for like yeah, six, six eight six hours, hours. Okay. if you're only there for six eight hours um, you you have a couple of choices uh, you could do a, t a tour or two or three yeah. which are overpriced but they're shipped Organized and Going so you know. Hell is interesting in that uh, the ground. Yeah, there, there's a place. Look like any other place. There's a place they call hell in. And you Canada. can send a postcard in it. You have a post hell. office. <laughs> it's only open during the week. You can send a. You can sell a letter. A post. Uh, you can send a postcard from hell to your relative. Uh, but it's a it's a thirty minute thing. I mean, you get there thirty minutes later, you're done. You're ready to go, and they will take you to other spots, I guess. Um, you can go to Stingray City if you want to go with 140. Yeah, the, the problem with price. Stingray City is this picture right here. Uh, here it is right here. This is Stingray City where you end up on a boat yeah. like that, and they're, that they're all in a circle. You don't see the circle there. There are probably 500 people standing in four or five feet of water, and that photo is misleading because it does not show any white crested waves in the horizon. That dark blue water over there, that is outside the reef, and that the is sound. where the waves are five, six feet high almost all the time. Yeah. And um, 
mean, it's cool if, if, it's, it's, if you've never done this before. Yeah, this is where you get to stand. The stingrays are, are, are floating around. They're swimming around. But it's all staged. I... I we really had our little local guy that uh, eight people on his boat. Yeah, not the good. but not these guys. No, no, these guys will load you up with 40, 50 people. I would not. I do not recommend it. I just. I think don't. you just you take your scuba gear. You go on to Seven Mile. Take beach, your snorkel gear. Your snorkel gear. You go here to Seven Mile Beach. And go up to the cemetery. And there's the or that or, or the public beach at Seven Mile Beach. There's a public slowly. beach with cabanas. And a shower facility and bathrooms. You can take a cab up here for about eight, ten but bucks. No, you got to take everything with you because there's no one selling you stuff on this. Beach. Probably not, although we haven't been there for years. Yeah. I don't know anymore. Yeah. But you can walk this beach as well. Not. It's gorgeous. Oh. It's nice. Here's a shot of downtown gotta, Georgetown where you will park. You got to go to a million available places and buy rum cake. <laughs> Rum cakes everywhere. It's um, so good. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Good. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. It is beautiful. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The ships park just offshore. You tender in on little lifeboats, yeah. and it's really nice. Uh, downtown to walk around, but I can tell you right now, my friend, you are going to be not alone. There are going to no. be many other people. And um, if it's a day, again, if it's a day visit, I don't know how else you're getting there. Uh, if you're going to hang out um, for a week, it's a different experience and knock yourself up. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Jen, from Larry Titus. Beach Boy Gonzo, say hello to SBF. He should be he should be by the fridge at the convenience store. <laughs> Who's that? Who is I don't know who that I don't know who that is. John Anderson, hello, Jen. Splair, we have for Hi, real Jen. a short day. I thought it's a casual day. Beach Boy, uh, here we go. Can you see this? Oh, is he doing it again? Oh my God! Hi, Jen. Beach boy. Ho, 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 ho. Towards ho. Jennifer's um, Jennifer's hip replacement surgery fund. Thank you, my friend. You look up generosity in the dictionary. You're seeing his picture. It's his picture. That's his you're picture right that. there. He's he's the number one guy. The number amazing. one. The 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 biggest donor we have is unreal. You are awesome, pal. Thank you so much. Many of you have kicked in, and I we thank you. All. Oh. I mean every. Whether you've donated five bucks or ten or fifty or whatever you want, you guys are great. Uh, these these donations, these PayPal donations, they're 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 delightfully unexpected and appreciated. Is that the way to say? It? Yeah. We love you for it. It really Absolutely. means a lot to us. We uh, yes. we were at our bank Good last uh, Wednesday to wire oh. to wire money oh. to our <laughs> landlord. Um, uh, we uh, we deal with the real estate Two hours, office. I'm never getting back. Yeah, we 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 have to wire funds to our real estate office people at the country club that we rent the Trust condo from because yeah. they rent it through them to us. And uh, fine, fine. I love this. I love doing this because I'd rather send the funds to the yeah. club's real estate office, who will give us Level the keys. Yeah. They inspect the unit. All this stuff. It's great. But oh, we we you couldn't do one wire. Oh no, that's more than ten thousand American dollars. You can't do a wire for more than that. You're a drug dealer if you do that. Oh no, we're not going to do that. You you stinking Canadians who have the gall to leave our city in the winter time. We're not going to let you do those kinds of wires. So we had to do multiple wires for this five month rental contract that we put together. Oh, two hours. Two not, hours. Not quite two hours. Every <laughs> wire had to be initialed by people at the bank of senior people. And everyone has to be completely, and their long form has to be completely retyped. No autofill here, people. It's bunk. It is BS, oh, it is, is what it is. Total BS. Every year we learn something new about oh. how to, oh. <laughs> how to do it. And I said to Jen, oh, now, okay, you had fun. How are we going to pay for the operation? I know. We can't pay for it up here. We gotta we, we pay the hospital down there. How are we gonna do that one from there? We'll to, figure. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be we'll figure it out. But I mean, geez, give me unbelievable. Anyway, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I love you all. Uh what else is going on I hope here? Everybody had a good Thanksgiving. There. Three good. Football game. See, Rusty Rusty Bosco is a new member of this channel. Uh, Chilling with Uncle Bruce member. Thank you so much, Rusty, for joining us. 
Nice to have you. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're here for the very first time, welcome aboard to this wonderful family of fantastic Buckle members. <laughs> Buckle up, Buttercup. We're going to have fun and make a lot of money. Buckle up. I told everybody. About to explode. I told everybody on this show uh -huh. what I told all the Gold Bagel members on, on Wednesday, Wednesday night mm -hmm. that my job is not complete for oh. each and every yeah. one of you unless you're generating thirty thousand a month in option premiums. Yes. Unless you do that, I haven't done my job yet. I have to keep working with you. Got to get you yeah. there. Uh, and that threw a few people for a bit of a loop going, oh, wow, whoa, I, do this. I didn't think this, really? Yes, yeah. really. Oh, yes, really. And that's chump I mean, change. Yes, that is while. chump change in the option business. It's chump change. To, to not your portfolio it's options. not one trade. It, it, no, it, no. It, it's going to take, but it's no. there. That's the objective. We don't yes. do it in one trade. No, no. I mean, I have 14 classes for a reason. I didn't do one class to show you how to make thirty thousand dollars in a month. If there's anyone out there who's trying to sell you uh, some kind of a uh, some kind of a course or, or or something that's two hours long that'll show you how to make thirty thousand dollars in a month, Come out, for one afternoon, you, you have wasted every dime you're giving these people. There is no dang way that is possible. It is, does not exist. It is a fallacy. Yeah, I've got fourteen lessons on the go now. There'll be more added going forward. But for those of the folks here, many of these folks have taken all 14 classes, have like been that. in the live session with 14 classes and or have watched them all, and we're still learning. So you, you got to learn how to do your multiplication, your addition, before you go on to your algebra, true. your trig, your calc. But, yeah. True. There's all that. Emotion, stink bids, oh, stink emotion. offers, 90-10 rules expiry dates how exercise this. prices how, how, how to learn to do this <laughs> this is a whole other class how right here this is hard uh, this is hard that's hard uh, uh but then you remember there's always rugman uh, working you. for you behind the scenes he's there to help you folks rugman is there <laughs> rugman is there yoink. yet yoink uh anyway welcome welcome rusty says dq and tiff welcome rusty DQ, who are we um dq playing? who are we playing uh man i can't stand people whose names are cap letters oh wait i'm dq <laughs> dq who are the steelers playing this weekend tell us please uh jen needs help who who who, who 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 they playing not that it's going to make a difference just who's oh. playing who's playing uh oh. oh larry titus uh never mind getting uncle bruce to stay on with us till 1 p.m let's get jen to hang up with us the whole time <laughs> You guys don't have enough money. You don't have enough money for I, that. You I, think I you do. I am I'm really busy today. She's really I'm busy really today. Busy today. Uh, we're trying to keep Uncle Bruce homeless with all these donations, says Bagel Babe. That's right. um, <laughs> JR, hey, um, E1, uh, putting finishing touches on the Rugman song video. Um, oh, please no. post some of your favorite <laughs> stock market option memes on Discord for me to use. JR, it's a rough oh, cut at the nice. moment, but I'll be updating with some personal acting to add to my funny actor. Thank you. <laughs> Um, fool of a took says 30,000 is like half my salary with three jobs, including yeah. teaching full time. Ha ha, that's it. Uh, JR, good suggestion, Larry. AJ, 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 Andy Jen, Andy Jen, Andy Jen, <laughs> DQ, D, Uncle Bruce, Uncle Bruce, DQ says the Colts. You're playing the oh, Colts. Oh, that's right. Did I know that? And you're probably at home because the Colts had a home game last night, didn't they? No, 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 no that, that was Indy. Really? No, who was that yesterday? <laughs> Minneapolis last night. Was that the mini? Who was that last night we watched? Wait, yesterday. Last night. Last night. Who we watched last night? Was the Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings. Okay. From Minneapolis. I don't know what to. Who from Minneapolis. Yeah. These are the Colts from Indianapolis. There you go. It's the <sighs> polis. The polis. Which is Greek for? Police. City. <laughs> the cops? The polis? <laughs> We're playing the cops? They we're gonna get crushed. Oh no! Oh no! Are you on the road? I don't know. A DQ? Are they on the road or at home? You didn't answer the question. Um, <laughs> I think he said. I think he went it. at Indy. Oh, okay. so you're on the road. Okay. On the road. Thank yeah. you, DQ. Uh, without you, we'd have yeah. no idea what the hell's going on. Um, See, I'm I'm too caught up in Christmas stuff right now. <laughs> I get stuff done. Splare TV says Uncle Bruce's classes are useful stuff. Uh, above thirty hours, actually. Uh, different college. 
um, 3,000 euros for a month and you learn only stuff about how to trade stocks. So far, I've heard about. So uh, thank you, Spurn, for that. Yeah, the, the, the fuzz, says Dika. You're playing the fuzz. He's been playing. He's playing the fuzz. Yeah, they have a different kind of shotgun formation. <laughs> you don't want to defend against that unless you got flak jackets. Oh, no. Right. Oh, man. Splair says here you can really learn actual real strategies uh, and a casual way how to get gains. And only the facts you need to learn. He goes, uh, yeah. thank you, Spurn, for those kind words. Thank you all of you for supporting this channel so much. We now have thumbs ups, 169. We need 31 more to get to 200 thumbs ups. There you ups. go. It's going to be, you know, the the uh, marathon that you don't get off until 200. I feel like I'm on a Jerry Lewis marathon. <laughs> I'm trying to get 200 thumbs up today. I'm begging them. I'm begging for thumbs ups today. It's not easy. It used to be a lot easier. It's not that easy anymore. So what's going to be this morning, Deacon White? Oh, uh, what should I have on a bagel today? It's mm -hmm. funny because mm -hmm. it feels like it should be Monday. Yeah, but it's Friday. Because yesterday was the three football day. Yeah. But it's Friday. Yeah. See? Yeah. It's weird. Mm. So here's... Your tummy and your brain have nothing to go on here. No. I got no turkey to offer you. No, no, we don't. Everybody have... knows the next day is the best. The day after is always the best Cold day for food. turkey on a bun. My mom used to always make fresh buns with a little mayonnaise, pepper. Squish that bun down. Oh, so good. So good. Or you do the open face. Well, there, that was my favorite. And now you've got the dressing and the gravy on top. You get yeah. you, 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 you put the bun. You, well, what, what you do is you put the turkey on the plate. You put the stuffing on the plate. You put gravy all over the place. Right? In the microwave. You oh, uh, yeah. Then you bring it out. Then you take the bun. Okay. You put the bun on the plate and you squish everything on top of the bun. And give it another 15 seconds, 20 seconds to get the bun heated. Because you don't want the bun heated for like a minute. Just 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff on the top is just. And, and then yeah. you're. And then and then salt and pepper. Oh, yeah. Okay. Did your mom make a turkey or did she do a duck? Uh, no, no. Uh, Thanksgiving in our house. Well, okay. My mother was German. Father from Lithuania. So they were European, big time. So, yeah, so we Europeans were not Thanksgiving people. So for the uh, for the fa for my pop to have that Monday off, which was like a rare day off above a Sunday. Uh, and wh where would it have been with Oktoberfest? Would it have been after? Yeah, this was Oktoberfest. Yeah. yeah, this was. See, we lived in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario, and that's the home of Oktoberfest in Canada. My dad was in the band. He was the conductor of the of the Umpapa band. Uh, Twenty guys. He was in charge. He was working. Yeah. So we didn't actually have a day off. Really, he had a, a day off from the store, but he didn't have a day off from playing Umpapa music. That, that would have been the week of October. 1st. That was parade day. Yeah. We had a right. parade through right. downtown Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario. That was two hours. Yeah. That parade. That that route was two hours, and they'd be on a float. For the German club that they were With representing. Your mom's store, that my was, mother's that was Christmas. And, and my Christmas. mother had a store called Dirndl Schutz, and it sold Dirndls for women and later hosen for the men and the hats and all this. This was Christmas for her. So busy, the week busy, busy. prior was not so cuckoo. The week of was insanity. Uh, and then um, and then the week after that was <laughs> alterations and time. recovering. <laughs> So there was no holiday for us. There was no Thanksgiving for us. Yeah. There wasn't any, oh, we can lie around the house and do nothing for three days. No. And the Friday, Black Friday, the music store was open for Black Friday. So my father had on his plate yeah. the band for the club, the music store Black Friday, the Dirndl the shop Dirndl for shop. my mother hauling in the dollars. Uh, I was in the music store helping out there. Uh, he was in the dress shop helping her out after doing his obligation with regard to the band. Uh, our sisters were, my sisters were involved. The whole, it was whole like family was in. go time. It was no stopping at all. 
All hands um, on deck. All hands on deck nonstop. It was absolute and complete mayhem. And it was the, the two weeks of the year that turned the finances completely upside down to the good, to the positive. Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And then after that, it was now, well, in, in the can in case of Canada, our, our Thanksgiving's earlier than America. This would be the first week or two of October. And so then we would grind it out after the third week of October to get to Black Friday America. And then we knew all of our customers in the music store were now of the mind, time to do Christmas shopping. And so the music store was ramping up as the Durndal shop was ramping down. And my parents, between the third week of October and the third week of November, got on an airplane and went to Europe to do buying from factories in Germany and Austria, Switzerland, material. for material and for dirndls and, 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 and pre-made dirndls and, and getting lederhosen and getting jewelry. The material and with all that embroidery on All the orders would be made for the next year's season for Oktoberfest for my mother's shop because she made her own dresses. She manufactured them all oh. year round, including the blouses and the aprons all top quality stuff like the best back in 1979 uh, 80 81 you wanted to buy a full-blown dirndl from my mother's store with two aprons and two blouses you were dropping 300 canadian dollars in 1980 <laughs> 300 dollars was a month's rent for jennifer and i you like a, glove. a month's rent of our apartment for one dress and two, two uh, aprons and blouses. That's how expensive this was. And my parents would fly to Europe to get the material, have it imported back, and for the year she would be manufacturing yeah. this stuff and piling up all the sizes, all the colors, all the various patterns for sale for the three-week blowout that would happen. So we had no time off, no way to yeah. rest, no. It was unbelievable what what they what they were able to well, do. Well, out on the prairies, <laughs> out in Western Canada, by the way, at that time, while we, while I'm in Ontario working my ass off, Jen in Alberta is uh, very often for Thanksgiving. Uh, we might have a turkey, but we knew Mom knew she was going to have a turkey at Christmas. We were always turkey people. My aunt always a goose. Um, but we were turkey, so we might have a ham at Thanksgiving. And we always had a ham at Easter. Ah, yes, yes. Just to, you know, yes. shake it up a bit. The big meal in our house was Christmas. Yes. Uh, for Christmas That's Day, big meal is Christmas. my mother would, uh, or Christmas Eve, actually. It was Christmas Eve was the meal, actually. Uh, goose. Uh, my father loved to have a Christmas a big Christmas goose. Mm -hmm. That was a big deal with um, with red cabbage that my mother road used to coal. make that to die for a road coal mm -hmm. and uh, potatoes of some kind and um, salad and whatever. I mean, it was a it was a feast. It was an absolute feast. And then Christmas Eve we opened our presents. That was the German tradition. That Christmas Eve you open your Christmas after the big meal. Well, we couldn't open the presents. Uh, after the big meal until the dishes were done. Mm -hmm. But it was the one time a year, one time a year that dad helped do the dishes. Oh. Yeah, that was that that was a big deal. This was huge. To watch my father in front of the sink <laughs> washing dishes. And my mother would be told by my father, you sit over there and rest, because she'd been cooking all day. And then the kids uh, my sister and I basically, we were drying the dishes while he was washing them and putting them away. Yeah. And my little sister, the little the tiniest one, just jumping up and down, can't wait for us <laughs> to get them to open up the presents. <laughs> so that was what was going on. Of course, my, my mom would try to keep the, the little one calm the hell down and out of the out kitchen of the while my dad and my sister and I were getting all that done. And then after that was all done and it was put away, and uh, dad would have a beer, fresh beer poured. Yeah. And uh, then it was time to take pictures of the tree and the presents and the kids standing in front of the tree, the whole routine. Remember those photos with cameras with film in it? Yeah. 
Uh, and then uh, now it's time to open his But then my father in my younger years would pull out the movie camera. He would pull out the Kodak or the the uh, the, uh, the, 16 the 16 millimeter camera with the film in there that had a, a cartridge that you slapped in good for 45 seconds on this side. Then you took the cartridge out, turned around, put it back in. You had 45 more seconds. seconds. No sound. No sound. <laughs> was right. color. Not minutes. Seconds, seconds 45 seconds color. each side in color, no sound to yeah. shoot the camera. If he had a second cassette, he could do another minute and a half. But to oh. buy the cassette, mail it to Kodak to get processed and have it come back, you're talking about five, six, seven dollars yeah. for a turnaround for a minute and a half of video. Five, six dollars in 1968. How much money that is? That's a tank of gas. How much money do you pay for a tank of gas now? Hundred bucks, eighty bucks, yeah, eighty dollars for one and a half minutes of color film. <laughs> Hello, no yeah. sound. What? Yeah, we're spoiled now. We had one cassette. Everybody's you had one film, and if that cassette came in ruined, Oops. if it was a defective cassette, you didn't know. You didn't know. No one knew. You you shot. Or it got you sent it in. When it, was it got destroyed in the mail on the way there. It it got destroyed at the factory because it was all screwed up. Or it came back as a film, and then the package got driven over by a forklift. There were no copies. There was no make me another one. There was none of that. It it came back, and and my dad got these four inch wide plastic reels with <laughs> film on it. And he would put that onto his uh, film Jeffrey. cutting machine. Oh right! And he, he would edit. edit it. He would he would take the front off, and yeah. he would he would do that. And he would also mm -hmm. have a sign. He had a letter board maker, and he would put letters. He yeah, said, Christmas, the letter on. Christmas, nineteen sixty eight, and he would film that. He'd actually film that with his camera before he sent the film in. Yeah. He would film that, send that in with the yeah. in the cartridge. And then he would find that clip. He would put that in the front of the of the clip, edit it all together, and then he would put that onto his, add it onto his big reel of existing film. And then uh, on uh, on the second third week of January, sometime in February, we'd watch the film from Christmas Eve. <laughs> what it was like this Christmas? Yeah. yeah. For a minute and a half. <laughs> Modern technology at its oh. highest degree. And in 1968, color. Color. color, and my friends would come over, and they'd watch it, and they'd go. My parents don't do that. We don't do that. No. In our house. We, we uh, Uncle Fester took a couple of photos on a Polaroid, and there's like only one copy, and the photos were kind of blurry. Well, and now your Polaroids have all turned yellow. No, no, they're all they're <laughs> all destroyed. Where my father took all the home movies when he was um, in his mid late 60s. He hired a guy in uh, Creston, and he put it all onto uh, DVDs, and he did a voiceover. And did a voiceover with his, with yeah. my mom. So my mom and dad did a voiceover so all of are. all the home movies and gave the kids, yeah. I and my sister, we each got a copy of this, and we got a copy of our home movies and a copy of all the photos and slides he took. Yeah. With with running commentary, that is Uncle Joe. That is Auntie So and So. This was shot yeah. in Germany in 1962. This was So and So. That was such and yeah. such. Otherwise, I have no clue what the hell these That's photo right. albums are. He's gone. My mom is gone. I have girls no idea. All my girls all fine. Yeah, it's memories, man. High tech. Yeah. Oh baby. I'm sure there were multiple videos taken yesterday. How many videos were taken on iPhones? How many? Billions of right? uh, yeah. of minutes of of, of Thanksgiving celebrations of took place in the last forty eight <laughs> hours and will continue to be taking place today and tomorrow. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes, <clears throat> indeed. And a lot of of adults sitting on the couch this morning, having their coffee with possibly a little something in it, going, ah, "We did it for another year." <laughs> another Thanksgiving has come and gone. We've done it. And then there are those no, who are, and there are those who are in their forties yeah. reminiscing about Thanksgiving when they were kids, and who isn't here anymore? Yeah, I remember I was eight years old, and they're looking at the photo album and going, "Oh, there's the 1980 yeah. Thanksgiving we had," and that person's gone. That person is gone. That person is gone. That person is gone. That person's gone. 
and uh, you look around the room and you ask yourself, who's next? What, the next five well, years? Only more than people old? do that, honey. Well, <laughs> you, you, you reflect when you get older. You reflect <laughs> and go, I might be gone. I, I might not be here in five years. I don't know. You're waiting to see the hand of the death. Hand of, well, here it is. Here shoulder. comes death. <laughs> But a mere hand hand thing away. So that's why I always say when you're getting together with family and friends, give extra give extra hugs to people that you know, yeah, getting on. Give you know, give them an extra hug. You don't know. This might be the last time. Yes. It might be they live another 15 years, but they're so ill, uh, they're in a hospice somewhere and they never they can never come over again. You, you never know. You never know. Enjoy okay, life, on kids. That happy on that happy, cheery thought. Cheery thought note. <laughs> Party! <laughs> what am I putting on your bagel? Um, I think grape jelly today. You think? Okay. I mean, toast yeah. that sucker. It is Friday. Yeah. But it feels like a Monday. Yeah. Sandwich that together. Yeah. And, and, and and grape toast jelly. those grape. Get those, get those sesame yeah, seeds a, toasted. A, a, a toasted and a roasted. And yeah, let's do that. You say that every day like I have forgotten. <laughs> this is where you don't say anything. Hello. Yoink. Love you, baby. Yoink. I think I'm getting yoinked. Uh, oh, my God. Thank you, everybody, for being here and hanging out. Ah, so much fun. Turkey Bagel says, Larry, how about a turkey bagel? Uh, Rusty is saying, hey, I'm a new member. I've been a lurker since 2021. Uh, uh, I need help. I got a Google 1125 uh, expiring, an $89 uh, expiring um, at one. Oh, today, uh, expiring. Uh, broke rollout or payoff uh, credit card debt with the 89. Not sure what to do. I'll, it'll be a hard to roll since no margin, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, okay, Rusty, I'm not sure what you're telling me. Are you, uh, have you written a call, an $89 call that, uh, that's what it sounds like you're saying. If I got my brain acting properly here, um, let's take a look. We're at $98 on the stock. If you've written an $89 call that expires today, it is, because today is option expiry day, it is uh, $8, $9 in the money, right? We're $98.14 on, on Google right now. What should I do? It expires. So, um, um, yeah, that's right. It is. So, hang on. Let me double check here. I've got my computer. Plug it back in. There we go. Um, what to do? Uh, plan or, or pay off credit card debt with the 89. Not sure what to do. It'll be hard to roll since no margin. So, I mean, okay. So if you're able to theoretically buy it back and, and write another call, that would be the rollover. I'd recommend that as your number one move. Um, definitely. But which one and how? Uh, there's the question. Oh, my God, what to do? Uh, let's see if I can get this on my big S iPad here. Um, is my big S iPad going to respond to me? Uh, you know, I'm here. Hello. Okay. Um, Google, I'm assuming it's it's the Google symbol. 98.09, last trade down 73 cents. Um, contracts. Uh, let's get that up here. There we go. Um, here we go with calls. All right, so. Uh, yeah, you have a contract dying today. So what can you write instead uh, in, 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 in theory? Okay. Um, if you went out to uh, December 16th, the third Friday of December, um, let's take a look at those. The 89s are 980 to 995. Uh, they're barely ahead of the money. So uh, no, no real reason to write those. You're not going to get any cash. There's a problem. Except that you extend the game. You extend the game plan you buy back this call for probably nine something dollars you write this call for nine nine ninety and maybe you bring in a hundred bucks i don't know um okay that's one strategy could you go further out yes you could would it be worth your while that's the question uh let me double check now let's say you were to write a january call to replace this november call okay um and of course what does my big ass ipad do oh I, I can't show this right now no you're gonna show it to me you're gonna show it to me like it or not i'm refreshing it so we'll see what i can get this up um 
I was just wondering, do you own a deep in the money call that you've written against this call or do you own 100 shares? If you own 100 shares, you have a choice where you could sell the stock, buy back your call, you sell the stock, um, and then buy a deep in the money call instead and write a call on it. Uh, you could maybe play that game. Could you theoretically buy two calls that are deep in the money that cost you each less than $49 and write two calls instead of one? I mean, is that a possibility? Uh, maybe. Let's go through this again to, oh, I went a little too far there. Um, just for the hell of it, I, I touched February calls, so let me see what a February does. If you were to write a February $90 call, which is as close to 89 as you're going to get, you could bring in 12, uh, 1215 to 1225 on a contract. So if your call costs 900 something to buy back, and you can write this one for 1200 something, there's 300 more dollars in your hands now for a $90 call for February. Do you write a, a, a $95 call for February? You'll only bring in about $875 to $890, which means it's $100 less than what you're paying, but you're moving up five in strike. Okay, fair enough. Now, let me, let me uh, scheme away here for a minute. For the heck, oh, it, can this be done on a poor man covered call? I don't know. Um, January 2024 calls. Uh, if you were to buy, if you were to acquire or attempt to acquire a $60 contract on Google, it's um, it would be $38 in the money. A $60 call would be $38 in the money. So you can't spend more than $42 for the call. And it's trading at 43. It's really close to a 90-10 rule. It's like a dollar too expensive. Not too bad. If you went to a 65, that would be worth $33. You'd pay about 36-ish. They're trading at 37-ish, 38-ish. If you went to a 70, uh, that would be worth $28. It's too expensive. You can't get it. It's it's $35. You don't want to spend more than uh 31, 32. Going backwards to a 55, um, a 55 is in the money, $43. Uh, 43 plus 55 is 98. Yes, it is. 43, you need to pay 47, 48 max. You can get it for that price. Um, around 47, 48, you can buy this call. This is a 90, 10 rule contract. So you sold your stock for, for 97 bucks, 98 bucks. And you bought this contract for 47 something, 47, 50, 48 dollars. You're paying, um, uh, you're getting 9,800 and you're, you're, you're paying this, okay? Um, you have enough to buy two of them. And you would write two new calls that could be January calls or December calls. And you could probably bring in nine bucks a call. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. So you'd be bringing in 1800 cash against the two deep in the money calls that you just bought equal to what you just sold your stock for. That might be the way to do it. Now, the logistics of it all is you, you buy your call back, you sell your shares immediately. You have a cash balance. You, um, um, you buy a deep in the money call one, write your call against it. Now turn around, Buy the second deep in the money call, write the second call against it. The end of the session, with when it's all said and done, you have two deep in the money calls. You've got two calls written against it for December 16th, um, and you should have a cash balance in your account. There is my suggestion right there. Um, I hope that helps you. I hope you can follow all that, and I hope it makes sense. Okay? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm going to catch up with your comments because they've been just going by here and I've been ignoring them. Thank you all. Thank you all. Uh, Rusty, I can sell other assets, can scrounge some money maybe to roll out young newbie here. Kind of want to pay off the credit card debt, but Google is my only cover call I got in my taxable. Typing in the Xbox uh, it sucks. Uh, no, not a PC. Gotcha. I still understand what you're saying. I still understand what you're saying. I just, I'm guessing you have 100 shares 
that you're writing against. I'm I'm guessing. I don't know if you are doing a poor man cover call here. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you all. A Amy, Uncle Bruce, I'm looking at thirty-five dollar PFE. 2025 deep in the money call for around 1650 a bit outside the 910 rule lots of time on it though what do you think about this so pfizer is trading right now at 49 dollars you're trying to buy a 35 dollars call that's worth about 14 dollars book plus a buck 50 for that 9010 rule 16 bucks you're paying 50 cents extra but you're getting 2025s i would do that deal i would push it and get it and write against that. Yes, because you've got till 2025 instead of 2024. Okay. On the example I gave Rusty here, I was talking about a 2024 contract deep in the money. Take a look at January 2025's Rusty and see if you can get those under the 9010 rule in the same price point. Might be better off doing that. Another year of time. All right. Um uh, oh, this is interesting. Deuce Caboose says, my dad taught me as a young lad, if you want attention in the bedroom, do the dishes. Uh, wise words. Those are wise words. Uh, sometimes grabbing a vacuum cleaner uh, is how you really score brownie points. You don't say anything. You don't make a big deal about it. You just grab the vacuum cleaner, vacuum up the place, all the little things. It adds up, my friends. Uh, what can I say? All right, there you go. Uh, what else? What else is going on? Um what else? What else? What else? Uh, my wife thinks it's sexy when I do the dishes and clean the house. We have a spotless house. <laughs> right on, GR. <laughs> uh, right on, buddy. Well done. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, <laughs> DQ, Pulse Guitar, uh, it's check day for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just got a letter from Fidelity telling me Ryan will be getting a check. Uh, there you go. Uh, right on. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh gosh, uh, Deuce Caboose is Auntie Jen telling me to spike my coffee? Okay, I'll do it for her. I'll do it. Oh gosh, oh, what else is going on? Um, <laughs> uh, Flint Creek, my best friend hugged me tightly and was gone by morning. I miss him terribly. You never know exactly, you never know. You know, that's the thing. That's the thing. Um, anyway, there it is. Uh, uh, what else is going on? What else is going on? Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, what else is going on here? Splair, uh, good that Uncle Bruce at least is trying to give us a uh, really lifetime back through the ability through the ability to leave our job sooner or later. We can use this time to spend instead with more family and our pets and our friends. And yes. Yes, 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 indeed. Um, uh, I own 100, level one. Um, can only write uh, no poor man cover call yet. I'm still new. So uh, if that's the case, Rusty, then another another choice is to buy back the call and turn around and write a further out in time call. So uh, let's see if I can find this for you. Hang on. Can you write something here? Uh, let's see what we can do. You've got December, you got November calls. So what about writing something in March? I want you to bring in income. I want you to bring in money. I want you to get cash in your hand, uh, throw money on your credit card or whatever you can do, something, something like that. You could theoretically buy back your 89, which will run you about nine something dollars. And you could write another 89 for $14. For March, or you could write a 90 for 1330, or you could write a 91 for 1250, 60. You could write a 92 for 1200, another $300 in your hands, and move up and strike to 92. You could think about that. Um, and you're only six dollars in the money, you've got a $1200 money coming in. Hey, there's six dollars of premium that's going to disappear. Uh, hello, uh, uh. You could play that game. You could go further out. Yes, you can. You can play this game. You could write, look at it this way. You could write a January 2024 call against your stock. And you could write a 90 and bring in $2,130. That would be $1,400 more than you need to pay that one back. You can take that $1,400 leftover money and throw it on your credit card if you want. And just sit tight with your position. You, you you could, 
this call is only worth $7, $7.14. You're getting 2100 time premium. That's 1400 profit to you if you have the stock sit here by then and whatever. Again, you're a newbie. I know. You don't have to go this far out. You don't have to go this far low on premiums. You can write a 100 and bring in about 1600 bucks, 1650. That is 600, 700 more than what it'll cost you to buy it back. And you're an out of the money contract. You could play that game. I mean, it. There's a number of choices here for you, but you have to just you have to decide, my friend, for you what's the best course of action. And you can't make a wrong decision. You really can. Mm -hmm. uh, there you have it. Um, bagel, bagel, bagel says Larry Titus. And neat, neat, neat says Richard. Um, what else is going on? Um, a Goyote. I remember getting on Facebook on my Xbox 360 back in like 09. It blew my mind. Um, Goyote, this is why I do so many chores around the house, you know. <laughs> uh, what else is going on here? Um, I just turned on the Roomba uh, and seductively from, from my phone. Uh, that, that's what I, I, that's how sexy I am. I just turn on the room. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Coyote. I bought some new PC monitors on Black Friday sale with option writing profits. Thanks, Uncle Bruce. Uh, now, how about that? Uh, Coyote, you can now write that off as a business transaction. Uh, way to go. Um, let's see. Oh, what else is going on here? Uh, just trying to catch up with you guys. Um, mm, 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 a fool of a took sister, Rusty. I'm in the same boat as you. Only one contract at a time. GameStop, not able to do poor man cover calls yet. Curious to see how many contracts we will have out there this time next year. There you go. Uh, there you have it. Um, um, and I call that a win, 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 Coyote. I call it a win, win, win. Buying that, writing it off, a way to go. There you have it. Uh, Kent, hello. Just waking up late night in the casino. We're still in Vegas, but I did just take advantage of the Black Friday. Um, uh, same on SoFi. My average is finally um, is finally under ten dollars a share. I, I bought more SoFi, and I'm under ten bucks a share. Got it. Uh, right on, Kent. Way to go. Welcome to the party, pal. Uh, <laughs> Four fifty four on SoFi. Picking it up cheap. Why not? I'm under that price. Right on, Kent. Right on. Well done. Everybody, thank you for joining me. I'm just enjoying my bagel here. Trying to. Um, we're uh, we're uh, firing away here. We're up 141 on the Dow at the moment. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. We're up two on S&P. We're down 40 on the NASDAQ. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, everybody. Mm. What are they? Alphabet, 98.09. That's where we're at. GameStop, 26.61, down nine cents today. High of 27.05, now 26.61 on GameStop. Okay. There you are. Mm, 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 mm. Just caboose, does SoFi's large personal loan business bother you? No. Nope. More the better. Mm. Mm, Credit Savage, good morning, my fellow simpletons and degenerates. Hope everybody had a great day and enjoyed Thanksgiving with the family and or with friends. Black Friday, and I have no idea what to buy. I need nothing. How about that? Touch grass. Maybe you could buy shares. Uh, there's an idea. <laughs> welcome one, welcome all. ATIP up one penny. T t uh, Tesla up 62 cents. Apple down 271, GameStop down two cents, down 11 cents. Um, um, what else is going on? SoFi down 12, HBQ is up 41 to 3032, Amazon down a dime, Home Depot up 460, uh, Cisco down up a nickel, up a nickel on Cisco, Pfizer up 15 cents to 49 dollars, um, Netflix 451 lower. 286. IBM is up 28. Microsoft up 19. Vanek down 132. Adobe down 260. 
Uh, Goldman down nine, Google down 73, Boeing up 159, Moderna up 67 cents, Meta Platforms down 63, ME down the nickel, Rocket Lab down 17 now after a nice start to the day. Matterport down seven, Smart Rent down one and a half, Spire down a half, Sextera up a dime today. Rocket Lab, uh, Royal Caribbean up 33 cents, uh, Bed Bath Beyond down five, Carvana up two, uh, Hood down a dime, Blackberry up two cents. Those are some of the most followed stocks that we follow here. Welcome one, welcome all to the show and the channel. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. So good. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. Yep. NASA selects Rocket Lab to launch Tropics mission. Stock is down. Yep. It was up in the aftermarket Wednesday night. It was up in the pre-market this morning. Down on the day. Yeah. Bargoon. What can I say about Rocket Lab? It's sooner or later, it will take off. Mmm. Fantastic. Oh, boy. Now, here we go. Uh, Richard, my mom and I both bought ATIP shares this morning. Got them at 49.01. We're 3,200 miles apart from each other. We both saw that. We both picked them up. 49.5 cents a share right now on ATIP. A bargain. I am not sure what kind of a short position we have. I kind of wonder how many shares have been sold by people who are taking a tax loss, but they have to wait so many days to get it back, that 30-day, 31-day wash trading rule. And for now, the stock is down here until about the second week of December, and then all hell breaks loose as people try to buy back in. You guys are stepping in the middle in the middle of this with 52,000 traded today, and you're nibbling it up. You're taking off, they're taking up this stock, which means there won't be any for sale at 45, 49, 55, 60, 65 come the second week of January, fourth week of January. It'll be a buck, buck 25, buck and a half. And you'll be going, I bought it at 49 cents. I bought it at 50 cents, 52 cents. That's why I did that back in November when he told us about it. That's what I'm thinking. That's that's a possible possibility. Mm. Spicy. I'm trying to get a hundred sofi. There we go. At 450, 452.9, ATIP 48.1. Matthew, I just found this. On Tuesday, <clears throat> the proportion of short term contracts made up 50% of the SP 500's total options trading, according to Bloomberg. Richard, that's how we share time together. Deuce, spicy, 451, hot tip from Uncle Bruce. Put in a 451 stink bit. That's correct. Alberto DQ is the opposite of uh, is the opposite of Rugman. Laugh a lot. He mentions Tesla. And it takes off. What the hey? I'm joking. I love you, DQ. Matthew, looks like those YOLO people are trying to break even by the end of the year. DQ, Alberta. I'm the Costanza. I'm the Costanza. Kareem, what happened to nobody wanting to be long into the weekend? Did sentiment change or something? What's going on? Uh, Richard uh, Spicy, I'm I'm at 451. There we go. Alberto's loving this. Uh, DQ, Alberto, whatever trade I make pulls the rug out from my own profits. Um, uh, Alberto, dams. <laughs> 153 gain on the Dow, two-point gain on S&P, and a 40-point loss on NASDAQ. There you are. Mm, 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 mm. GameStop down a nickel. 26.65. The low of the day, 26.40. We're heading for the low on GameStop, maybe. 452.2 on SoFi. 49 on ATIP. Okay. 
Tesla's up 22 cents. Apple down 286. Mm. Oh, boy. Okay. If I'm, let me look at this right here. Fool of a Chuck asks an interesting question. How do I keep cash in my account for buying back calls if I'm using margin to help with picking up the stock? Okay. I have a question regarding margin. I obviously cannot use margin to buy calls back only to purchase stock, but when buying stock, doesn't it wipe out my cash first before using margin? Okay. Here's the reality full of it. You haven't got it quite right. Let's suppose you have stock that is marginable. You have a cash balance. You've written calls. They've gone up in price. You want to buy them back and you want to write new calls, which will bring in more money. Okay. That's the big picture. If you have a margin account with, a let's say, a $1,000 cash balance in it, but you need to buy $2,000 worth of options before you can sell options, if you have stock in the account that is marginable, GameStop would be one of them, I would imagine, you can buy options with your margin balance, with your marginable borrowing power. Yes, you can. Because the brokerage firm will say, look, uh, you want to buy two grand worth of contracts? Okay. You have a thousand in the account? We'll we'll apply that. You still need another thousand dollars. You're borrowing a thousand dollars on the marginability of GameStop. You have a hundred GameStop, they're worth uh twenty six hundred fifty-nine dollars. We'll lend you up to thirteen hundred <clears throat> against it. So you need $1,000 to buy these calls back from the 1000 that you already had. We'll lend you $1,000. Now you owe us $1,000. You own 100 GameStop. You flattened out your option position. You owe us $1,000. Your next move, I'm going to write options against my GameStop or you know whatever the situation is. Now, I'm using numbers that don't make sense because if you only got 100 GameStop, you don't need to spend $2,000 to buy back a contract. You're buying a $20 contract? No, you're not. I'm using this as an exaggeration. Maybe you've got 500 shares of GameStop or 1,000, but you need $2,000 to buy back your calls. You only have 1,000 cash on hand. You're borrowing the other $1,000 from the borrowability, the marginability of your account. And yes, you can buy calls. You can also call your broker and say, hey, listen, uh, you don't have to call them. You can send them an email. I want $2,000 in cash deposited to my checking account, which is linked to your brokerage account. You only have a thousand in the account, but you want $2,000. They'll send you $2,000. You now owe a thousand to them against the value of your game stock. It's a marginable stock. It's, a, it's an asset. It's you're carrying the, you're borrowing against an asset. They're charging a daily interest on the thousand bucks you're borrowing. So if you buy the stock contract back, the contracts back and you drop two grand to buy them back, you now are turning around to write new options against the GameStop shares. Again, this is an example I'm using. I don't know what your situation is. But you're going to write calls, let's say, another month down the road, and you're going to bring in $2,500. So you write those calls. You bring in the $2,500. You owe your broker $1,000. they are going to take that off the top. And you're paid off, and you have a $1,500 cash balance in your account. Now, at the beginning of the day, when you woke up today, you had so many shares of GameStop, you were short so many contracts, and you had $1,000 cash in your account. During the day, you bought back calls, sold new calls, and at the end of the day, what have you got? You got so many shares of GameStop in your account, 
you have 1500 in cash and not a thousand in cash and these are the contracts that you've written against your con your gamestop shares that's all you've you've encountered no interest charges today because you didn't borrow money overnight it was an intraday move you went long a thousand short a thousand long fifteen hundred dollars that that's the end of the day move you have a credit in your account theoretically you should be getting interest on your money from a margin account you should be paid interest now and you've got your stock and you have a new contract the situation that you've run with and we move forward that should be what's going on here if i've got you read correctly all right bw uncle bruce what's going on with the founding vcs venture capitals and funds that brought our SPACs public with markets down last year. Are they winning like the rest of us are probably already sold at losses? Um, the firms that took these companies public were all restricted from being able to sell any stock at all um, until their deal got done. Once the deal got done, they had partial releases. Partially, they were allowed to do it. Theoretically, they were able to do whatever they wanted, and some of them may have sold at twelve dollars eleven eight nine i don't know um uh they may be involved now they may not be involved now um it's possible that even after the roll-in of the private company to take over the spac that the new spac former spac that's trading now uh of all the stock out there the founding venture capital guys own three percent of the company seven 14. They might have people on the board of directors still helping the private company people run their new company under SEC rules. It's possible. Or they're totally out. It, it could run the gamut, my friend. Uh, some of them have lost a lot of money. Some of them broke even. Some of them made money, depending on the stock. Like Matterport, 30 something bucks a share. They could have sold off, you know, half of their stock got way more money out than they ever put in and they're still holding paper at these prices and they're waiting for it to come back. They might be buying it up right now very quietly and just nibbling it up again. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, the possibilities are endless. Uh, spicy, I am bidding 451 now. 454.9 last trade on SoFi. ATIP 48.7 last trade. Fool of a took. It seems like you can't have a margin balance and buy calls back. Yes, you can. Uh, uh, Wall Street, why in the world is RCL 60 bucks? Why? Why? Uh, yes, you can do. You can use margin for buybacks. Uh, I can use margin to buy calls back, says DQ. Rusty, sorry, Bruce. Can't do poor man cover calls yet. I, I don't know. I, I shouldn't do, uh, but but your market rolled to uh, 27 for 12, and I got plus 300. Okay. Uh, you, you did roll, and you got – oh, great. If you did it, I'm a happy guy. Uh, Deuce. Take care, everybody. Deuce is out. Uh, thanks, pal. Uh, DQ, see you, Deuce Caboose. Alberto, buybacks allowed. Eliminated margins, though. Don't like borrowing. DQ, uh, oh. Uh, fool of a took. I only have 100 shares of GameStop with a $1,400 cash on hand. Wondering if I can pick up 100 more shares and write one more call. Yes, you can. You can borrow against your stock to buy more stock to write another call. Yes, you can do that, too. You can borrow on the stock to buy a deep in the money call and write on that call. You might be able to buy two deep in the money calls instead of 100 shares. You could buy two deep in the money calls and write two more calls. You could do that. There's options, there's choices, there's there's possibilities. Fool of a took, you could go poor man cover call for about 14, 1500 with a $15 strike to 2025. I can't recall if you said you were able to do poor man's or not. Fool of a took, Gary, I can't do them yet. Alberto, um, stagnant money doesn't make money. Put it to work. There you go too. There's that. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of answers to a bunch of questions. I hope it's working out for you guys. Mm, mm, mm. GameStop is up 11 cents. HIP 48.7. So far, 454.6. Okay. Giddy up. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
Coyote says, if you use margin to cover the rest of the cost of the 100 game stop, make sure you start writing on it ASAP to pay down that margin right on. Mm-hmm. Full of a took, Alberto. Good point. Nick, 181 thumbs ups. Nick S. Thanks, pal. Fool of a took. Thanks, Bruce and Bagel Gang. Coyote, I think that margin is very crucial for option writers. It's very crucial. Nick, just woke up. What did I miss? Not a thing, but enough. Cody, don't be stupid with it, but when you need to do a buyback and roll, you'll be happy it's available to you. Exactly correct. When you have margin, you have the power to do a buyback and do a rollover, you're glad you have it. And it's very powerful and it can be very lucrative for you. Definitely. Mm. Thank you, everybody being with us today. So great to have you here. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh boy, so good. Man, this is good. <laughs> Alberto, right far out enough to either buy another 100 shares or as close as you can, reduces average and gives you another contract. Mm -hmm. um, Coyote, you're right. Margin has helped me help me out a lot with rollovers. You are correct, says Matthew to Coyote. Buy back with margin. You gain margin debt. Then you write immediately for more money. Erase margin debt and add to cash balance. Exactly. Interest doesn't matter that way. Correct. Splare. Yeehaw. Bagel, bagel, bagel. Rock and roll. Uh, yep. That's what we're all about here. Having fun in the big city today. Look at that toasted bagel. Look at that. Oh, those sesame seeds are roasted on there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Game's up. Up 12. So far, 454. HPQ up 35 cents today. Mm, 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 mm. Very nice. Very nice. Interesting comment about Apple. Apple weighs on the Dow Jones Industrial Average Analyst Charts iPhone Supply Woes. It is deep. There's problems in paradise. Oh, man, was that good? Oh. I love it. Richard Carlin is saying, I have a cash account, and I'm refusing margin. I just keep one to 200 shares to use as collateral when needed. Um, I write fewer contracts up front, but I have a backup stop. It's all good. I, it, you have to... Whatever it is you're doing, however you're playing the options market, however you're doing this with poor man cover calls or not, you got to be comfortable with it. That's all. You just got to be comfortable. And uh, a very conservative strategy is to write calls on stock you own. Very conservative strategy and effective. Nothing else to worry about. 
a more aggressive strategy, you own 300 GameStop and you buy 100 on margin. You have 400 GameStop now, but you owe on 100. You write four calls at a time. The premiums that you generate and, and the money, you, the change you keep goes against the cost of the 100 shares. So you're using 400 shares to pay for 100 shares. You do a few ro option rollovers, bringing in cash, bringing in cash, bringing in cash. You pay off the 100 shares. Now you have 400 shares, all bought and paid for. You buy 100 shares on margin. Now you have 500 shares. You write five calls. You're bringing in income from five to pay for 100. 500 shares are buying 100 now. That's going to go faster. You pay those off. You write another one. You buy another 100 shares on margin. 600 shares are going to pay for 100 shares. Do you understand how quickly this builds up? Soon you're going to have 700 shares buying 100. 800 shares are going to try to buy 100. 1,000 shares are going to try to buy 100. You get my trick. Now, you get 1,000 shares of GameStop bought and paid for. You can write 10 calls right now. You might buy 300 more GameStop right now on margin. 1,300 shares are going to pay for 300. That's the strategy. You're going to write 13 calls. If you can bring in five bucks a call, you're bringing in $6,500 in cash. You just bought seven, eight thousand dollars of the stock. You just brought in six thousand plus dollars in cash against it. You're going to buy those calls back. Let's hope for two bucks, and then write new calls for five bucks, right? Which brings in another three dollars on thirteen hundred on thirteen calls. For thirty nine hundred more comes in net net thirty nine hundred more to pay down the margin on the money you owe for the three hundred you bought. You're going to get to the point very quickly. You own all thirteen hundred cash. You own them all. You might now buy 400 on margin. You have 1,700 shares to pay for 400 shares. 17 contracts to buy 400 shares to pay for. 500 a contract coming in up front, gross. The math is all the same. It's all proportionate. You're going to get to the point where eventually you'll have 2,500 GameStop shares that you own. You're going to buy 1,000 shares on margin. And you're going to write 35 contracts to pay for them. That's what you're going to do now. This is a new, it's the same trade. There's no difference. It's just different numbers. It's all it is. And you'll get to the point where someone will look at you and go, oh, you're rich. And you're going to go, I'm not rich. I only have 3,500 GameStop shares. And they'll go, yeah, you got 3,500 GameStop shares. You're rich. Stock goes up five bucks in a week. You've just made $17,500 in value. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. I, I guess that's true. Yeah, I haven't thought of that. Yeah. It's all relative. You get used to the world you're in, and one person is envious. Another person has pity on you. Welcome to the real world. Welcome to Thanksgiving tables <laughs> around the world. Welcome to Thanksgiving dinner where half the relatives in a room envy you, the other half pity you. <laughs> and you do the same thing to them in your mind. That's how you are. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> oh, man. Shocking that the average American is no longer buying a new $1,000 phone every year. Um, BW, thanks, Uncle Bruce. If there, if there might be many institutions that will still holding up millions of shares of these SPACs, then I can hold on for dear life with my thousands of shares. Arms folded with the rest. There you are. Karim, if personal loans default, how does that affect SoFi, Uncle Bruce? Um they're going to be fine. The, 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 the amount of money that people owe SoFi are nickels and dimes compared to their overall wealth. SoFi is very, very careful how they lend out money. No one person can put them under. And not every single American is going to go into default. It's just not, not going to happen. They're, they're fine. They also have insurance. They have insurance on their loans. Uh, they're, they're pretty smart. Nick, Uncle Bruce, due to the wash rule, the chances of SoFi going low are more than going up, right? I have a 1172, uh, 21 um, April, 23, $6 strikes written for 46. I, I, I'm thinking what to cover or wait. <sighs> Nick, you, you got to play this game very carefully because if you're guessing, that's what you're doing. 
you are trying to guess what SoFi is going to do based on a tax strategy. And I don't know how many people have sold SoFi in the last week, two weeks, or three weeks to do this 30-day wash rule. And I don't know how many more are going to do this between now and the end of the year. What I do know is when the shares do a turnaround and there just isn't any selling coming in because everybody who wanted to sell for a loss did that, there are no more tax loss sellers, we're going to have a gap. Now, is the gap 30 cents? Is the gap a buck? Is the gap $3? I can't tell you. What I do wonder about, though, is is it possible that out of the whatever hundreds of millions of shares out there, are 30 million shares sold <clears throat> that need to be bought back just from a tax loss selling point of view? And are there another 30 million shares that have been shorted by short sellers playing this game that have to be bought back because they think it's going to go lower before it goes higher? Could there be 60 million shares of buying interest on SoFi that could come into play at any time between now and the end of the year without any warning whatsoever? And what does that do to the stock upon among the regular trading that will happen anyway? You're short a lot of contracts. Every penny makes you a ton of money. You have got to play this with precision because I tell people not to really write contracts down here. I, that's what I try to tell people. Don't write calls down here. But you're on top of the market. You're watching every little nuance. It's your call, pal. You know what you're doing. You understand the picture. I've given you all I can give you for information. Now you have to decide what to do. Exactly. Uh, Coyote, call writing is as conservative as it gets when it comes to options. It can be. Nick, if stock is below four, the contracts will be around 20 cents. Well, they're at their all-time lows now, kind of, sort of, near. Uh, you're, you're sounding like the GameStop people from two years ago who were short 70 million shares of GameStop and the stock was 274 a share. And those people were saying, oh, it'll go to a buck and a half, and then I'll cover. And they never did. And they got wiped out. I'm not saying this is a game stop. I'm not saying SoFi is going to 50 bucks a share in a week, but it's 456 a share right now. That's what I'm saying. And we're kind of at the low of all time. I'm saying that this company is growing, not shrinking. This company is getting closer to making money, not losing money. This company is on the way higher in the banking world, not lower in the banking world. This company is not going under. This company is about to make profits. You are gambling against all the success of this company that has been done and will be done. And you have the right to do whatever you want, any way you want to do it. Uh, I don't know where it's going in one minute, one hour, one week, one month, one year, I can't guarantee a single movement of the stock other than to say it's 457 and I believe it's cheap. That's my opinion. You've got yours. I got mine. Let's see what happens. Okay. Nazareth, what I love about Uncle Bruce is the most is that he'll teach you to kind of to fish kind of guy. It's up to you to make the move. He's just here to help you with the moves you make. It's really up to you to be comfortable. Nick. Sorry, the number of contracts, 1,720. And Gaiotti, $35 GameStop calls, the dream. Amy, bought back SoFi calls for 15 cents, wrote them for 42 cents a few days ago. Yes, congratulations. I love it when you make money, guys. I'm not upset that you wrote calls and bought them back and made money. I'm happy. I'm just also warning you, by the way, this could happen as well. And... It's up to you to decide your risk tolerance. How, how happy are you? How risky you want to be? That's it. Look at ATIP 49.9. It's only down 0.6 of a cent now. ATIP coming back to 50. I think my channel is buying up all the paper. Up, oh, trading at 50 right now. Trading at 50. 111,000. We've had 50,000 go through in about 15 minutes. ATIP is running again. Uh, good morning. I am number 186, says Zeta State. Thank you, Zeta State. 186 thumbs ups are in the house. 14 needed to get to 200 thumbs ups. Thank you all so much. 155 of you. I appreciate it. Fool of a took. Uh, so in theory, if I buy 100 new shares, which gives me 200, 
my marginability goes up once the balance is paid off since I will have more shares to borrow against. That's right. So if you own 200 shares outright, you can buy 200 on margin instead of 100. And if you write four calls against that balance you owe, you're knocking it off fast. Now, 400 are trying to pay for 200. Are you comfortable with that? Up to you. Yeah, swear. Uh, are you talking about calls? Honestly, don't write a call into the, it's low in the last three months. Don't write into the lows. Uh, on SoFi, particularly, don't write calls at the low of all time. That's what I'm trying to tell people. I'm trying to tell people, get your calls back and lock in your profits, people, and buy more stock down here. Just buy more stock. Look for a little rally and then write sixes, six fifty seven. I don't know, whatever you can. I don't know. Just not at the all-time low. This is where you buy the stock. This is where you buy back contracts. It's now when people are really in the dumps. On a day like today where there is very little volume overall, you take advantage of a sell-off because people are dissuaded and they're down in the dumps and the options will back off. And This is where you take them back and say, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll buy them all back here. It's okay. I'll give, these, uh, I'll give this money a good home that I'm keeping here. It's all good. GameStop, 26.86, up 15 cents. ATIP, 50 cents even, down one half of a penny. The Dow, up 169. S&P, up three and three quarters. NASDAQ, down 38 points. There it is. Here we go. That The oil market just took a dump. We're down 217 on oil. What happened there? All of a sudden, oil is down. It was looking so good. Uh, yeah, look at that. It, it's uh, taking a dump down 215 to 77.89 a barrel. Down we go. Wow, interesting. The Dow is near the high of the day. The S&P is just off the high of the day. NASDAQ is near the high of the day, kind of, but we're down 35 points. Whatever. Um, the uh, Europe markets look to be almost closed. Down a little on DAX. Uh, we're up a tad on FTSE. Not much there. It's a nothing burger day, and that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a nothing burger day today. What can I say? Uh, thank you all so much for being here, um, hanging out with us. I uh, really appreciate you all being with us today it's fantastic um this is good stuff all of you thank you thank you thank you thank you for being with me today from around the world fantastic all right okay uh what else is going on here oh my goodness we're having, we're having a wonderful visit with a bunch of people here today i really appreciate it thank you for those of you who are subscribing to this channel thank you for those of you who are joining this channel as new members Thank you for those of you who are joining this channel as members that used to be members and left for a while and you're coming back. Thank you for the returnees. Thank you for uh, chilling with Uncle Bruce level members. Thank you for Gold Bagel members. Thank you for thumbs ups, people. We have 186 thumbs ups now. Thank you for that. Uh, I couldn't ask for more. This is so nice. Thank you for making donations to Jennifer's hip surgery fund. That's great. Um, You'll notice I'm not showing you how much has come in, and there is no target. Uh, it's anyone making a donation towards Jennifer's operation. We just thank you very much, and that's that's it. Uh, if, you're, if you want to make one, we thank you. Uh, if you're taking classes, I thank you. Um, 14 classes are available. You want to learn how options work? Take the classes. Uh, it's as simple as that. Start with number one and move up from there. Uh, and we'll see you in the winner circle because um, you take enough of these classes, you're going to get the information you need and the guidance you need to really give you confidence as to you know how to do what you got to do. Uh, thank you all so, so much for that. Uh, those of you who are contacting me for one-on-one -on -one sessions, uh, love you guys for that. Um, we love, I love having these. Uh, it, 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 it helps me better understand where some of you are at in your lives in the world you're in um and sometimes i can come up with a suggestion that you hadn't even thought of to why did you think about this and you go oh my god i didn't know i could do that i didn't know i could do that if i did that that means this happens that's right but if that happens i could theoretically quit my day job yeah that's right 
Now you are in control of your life. You decide what the next move will be rather than what you're forced to do. You now can choose what to do. Is that a good thing? I think so. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. All right. Uh, what else going on here? Uh, um, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uncle Uncle Bruce, uh, Interactive Brokers doesn't uh, offer margin on GameStop. Could any one of the anyone else confirm this? And, and that's possible. Uh, they might offer only options on um, S and P five hundred issues. Um, the company has to be worth. I don't know, it has to be a profitable company. I don't know. Each brokerage firm can decide itself what they do on options, uh, on, on, on margin. Amy made $648 on the SoFi calls, works for me. A player, I would understand to buy calls into that down, but not to write. Splare, from five down to here was my experience, at least already. Amy, with rollovers in my back pocket, I am not worried. Uh, the class number 14 has just been ordered. Okay, yeah, you can order it off the website or you can send me a PayPal donation of 150 US dollars and send me a private email and say, Bruce, I've just sent you 150 US dollars. I would like to order a, um, I'd like to order class number, whatever. Uh, I can do that for you as well. So if you don't want to use the website, you can just make a PayPal donation to the PayPal link down below, 150 US. And I will get you a class that you want. Whatever link you need, I'll get you set up. You let me know. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All of you. Uh, however you like to do it. It's all good. It's all good times. All right. After the show's over, I'll, I'll get the links up. Um, Splare, instead of from 6 to 550 with one month time and in the money, it's a little cash cow for a good while in case I, I do totally agree. Richard. You're welcome, rock and roll. Touch grass, double tap on GameStop. Um, double top on GameStop, no, double tap. <laughs> 2642, uh, we're backing off a little bit. We're only up two cents. The old surfer, SoFi, has approximately 600 institutions holding shares with larger positions held by Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, Morgan Stanley, Fidelity. To me, this validates what we all know about SoFi. Keep in mind, though, that these institutions are probably holding stock for people. It's possible that some of these outfits are holding stock through their brokerage outfits that they operate and on behalf of clients. But also there are institutions that hold this stock. Spare on Matterport, uh, I am in that dilemma as well. 320 is too low for my gut to write a call when it's consolidating here. I write above 360 and under 389. A 350 or a $4 strike with one or two marts to go. Big Dave, what's the recommendation for today? L give hugs to your relatives because you never know when the next one is the last one. Um, Z Estate, I use interactive brokers and I bought my deep in the money GameStop call for a poor man cover call with margin. I always buy first and transfer the funds later. David, a lot of the big brokers still require 100% money, cash for GameStop. Both TD, Ameritrade, and Interactive don't let you buy GameStop on margin. Found out the hard way. Counts as a marginable security, but cannot buy. A fool of a took. When I go to buy 100 shares, a warning comes up on Merrill that submitting the order will generate a margin call. Laugh out loud. Going to pause and do more research before actually using my margin. Merco said a state in Europe, GameStop is marginable through interactive brokers. Uh, David, uh, this that is for shares at least, not so much poor man cover calls. Fool of a took. I have much to learn. They don't call me a fool for nothing. Laughing out loud. Big Dave's laughing out loud. Splare, let's pump Rocket Lab. Just kidding. I day trade there only a little with my PayPal e 2 row cash. Uh, we're up 177 on the Dow now, uh, up 3.6 on uh, S&P. NASDAQ down 37. ATIP trading at 50 cents even. Uh, Tesla 183.09 down 11. Apple uh, down 293 to 148. GameStop up 6 cents, 26.76. SoFi down 11, 4.55 a share. Um, HPQ up 33 to 30.24. Uh, Amazon is down a penny at 94.12. Uh, down three now on Amazon. Home Depot up 648. Cisco up a penny. Pfizer up a nickel. Netflix down 572. IBM is up 16 cents. Microsoft is up 28 cents. 
Vanek Vectors, the SMA, the the uh, the uh, the ETF is down 88 cents to 223. Adobe down 254. Goldman Sachs up 204. Uh, Google down 71 cents to 98.10. Boeing up 267. Moderna down a buck seven. Meta down 77. ME down 5 cents. Um, Rocket Lab down 20 to 419. Looks like we may have bottomed out here a while ago. Hit 414, now back to 419, down 20 cents on 1.6 million. Looks like a little rally engaged right now on Rocket Lab. Getting a little better. Uh, Matterport, 324.9, down 1.5 cents. Smart Rent, down 1.5 cents. Spire, unchanged. Sextera, up 9.5 cents. Royal Caribbean, up 52 cents to 59.88. Bed Bath Beyond up a penny. Carvana up 12 cents. Robinhood down 11. Blackberry up 6 cents. Target down 12 cents. JP Morgan down, up 37. Costco up a buck. Walmart down 24. Disney down is up 79. Nvidia down 150. American Airlines up 24 to 1466. The AMC Ape combination, three cents higher today. They're now trading at 888 approximately. Uh, Snowflake down uh, two dollars. DraftKings down twenty four cents. DoorDash down a buck. Um, yeah, Intel down eleven. Coinbase to forty four ten down one forty seven. Anyway, there's some there's some recaps of some of our most uh, most followed issues here. Uh, One hundred seventy six gain on the Dow, with ATIP unchanged at fifty point six cents right now. Unchanged on AT. IP, it's come back from its low of the day, which was 48.1 cents. The all-time low has been 47.8. We didn't touch the all-time low today on ATIP. We're back to 50.6 cents a share, 142,000 traded. 90,000 have come through since the low of the day, and we're coming on on ATIP. Tesla down 51. GameStop up 12. SoFi down a dime at 455.8. There is our story, and we're sticking to it, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Dow holding a 180 gain. The question is, will it hold it? Could it hang on, or will it lose it all? We don't know. 183-point gain right now. We close today at 1 o'clock Eastern in about an hour and a half. It's now... 11.30, 11.23 Eastern, we close in an hour and a half on uh, the day today. If I can, I'm going to stay on right to the close. And we'll hang out for the whole day today, see what happens. Um, interesting patterns, interesting moves. Oil still down 216 a barrel. Very interesting stuff um, out there. 26.80 on GameStop. Up a full-blown dime today. Woo-hoo. Um, very good. A splare on first trade. I added from my margin a buy power for a short while, five hundred dollars to give GameStop, uh, to, to to GameStop for my second batch of calls. Nick, uh, come on, market, do something. Zeta State, uh, Tiff, ah, that is a workaround. But if you sell a naked put, they will not let you use margin. You need cash secure to purchase if necessary. Splare. GameStop feels unchanged as well. Um, complete day at 26 bucks. It's a nothing burger day here. Uh, 26.84 right now. Apple 147.99 down again, down 308. Apple is weighing down the Dow. The Dow would be up 250 if it wasn't for Apple. But maybe Apple knows something the rest of the market doesn't know. And I think I know what that is. I've talked about that here now for weeks. Uh, we think we know what's going on. Tesla down 21 cents to 182.99. Uh, interesting. Uh, well, let's see what, what happened here. One o'clock, we close for the day on the Dow in New York, uh, Eastern Time. There it is. Okay. Interesting stuff today, kids. Uh, another day in paradise. I hope you're doing all right. I hope you have a good weekend planned. Uh, get some rest in there. Enjoy those leftovers. Enjoy time with family and friends if you're able to do that. Thank you all for hanging out with me and Rugman. Yoink, we like to say, 
When does all this go for a big yoink at any time? When a sell-off hits this market, it will be sudden, brutal, unannounced, no advanced warning. It'll be instantaneous. Tears will flow. People will kick garbage cans and go, why, why? And my option writers will go, yes, yes. Uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, very good. <clears throat> Thank you all. Coyote, one hour, 35 minutes until the close. That's right. One hour, 35 minutes, and we're done for the day. Uh, there you have it, everybody. Fun, fun times. Now, did anyone watch any movies over the weekend? Uh, what movies have you watched? Um, Jennifer and I, we watched The Godfather the other day because we watched that mini series called The Offer, all about the making of the movie Godfather and all the trials and tribulations the director had to go through to get that darn movie made, uh, including dealing with the mob. Uh, those of you who uh, uh, watched that, I'm sure you enjoyed it. We really enjoyed it a lot. Uh, but uh, yeah, let me know. Anybody watch any movies this weekend? Anything good going on? Splare. No, I'm wrong with that. It's showing me the time zone again from England. There you go. Uh, David, uh, hi, Uncle Bruce. Hey, Uncle Bruce. I wrote a $30 GameStop expiring May 2023. Depreciation seems to be slow at the moment. I'm looking to make dollars, not cents. I'd rather not wait until May to buy back. What should I be looking out for? Uh, the secret, my friend, is uh, if we have a dip, where the shares go from 2680 to 2580, 2480, the contract you've written will likely drop a dollar or more in value and hopefully will put you into a profit situation. Now, you've written 30s. So if the shares want to go down to 2425, you might do this. You might just buy back your $30 calls, no matter what you sold them for, and turn around and write $28 calls for May 19th again, bringing your call $2 closer to the market, which is down here, bringing extra cash into your pocket right now. Maybe you'll get a buck a contract more, a buck 50 more. I don't know. It's the same time frame to lower strike, more money to you. That's one option or one choice you can make. A second idea could be where you decide, okay, um, the shares have gone down to 25, 24, 50, 25 and a quarter. Uh, I can buy my calls back for, you know, this price instead of this price. I'm going to buy my calls back, my 30s. I'm going to now write $27 calls or $26 calls, but not for May, for January. And you're going to take a look at the option chain and see what would it cost to buy your calls back for the 30s you wrote or may how much will it cost you and what can you get if you write a 26 or a 27 dollar contract for january or february can you bring the time in from may to january and bring your strike from 30 to 27 or so at the same price can you buy this call back for this much and sell this call for that much no change in how much money is in your account but the time value just came down big time. I mean, the time range from May to January, whoa, this contract is expiring a lot closer now. And yeah, you're still out of the money, but you know, you're not way up there at 30. You're at 27 or something like that. Those are a couple of choices you have at any time. You must always be watching your option chain to pull off the switcheroo. Most of my viewers love the idea of writing a 29 or a 28 or a 27, 26 May for more money. They just take the money. Others love to write a $26 January call for more money than it costs them to buy the $30 May contract. They love that too. It's a question of what turns you on, what comfort level have you got, what risk tolerance are you thinking of. You have all kinds of choices to make here. Okay, there you go. Nick, Splare, time zones are hard. Uh, yeah, thanks, Coyote. Uh, Zed, um, Uncle Bruce GameStop, eight contracts sold for three fifty with a strike of $30. Um, I could buy it back today for one sixty five. I could roll or wait. What are your thoughts? See, these are, these are more thoughts. Now, you could wait until Monday and let today go by, Saturday go by, Sunday go by, Monday show up, and you might be sitting at uh, one forty. 
145 on Monday. Now, 20 cents more, 160 bucks. Is that something to sneeze at? No, but you know, it's possible. On the other hand, if you do buy back now, and then you turn around right now and decide, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell my uh, my calls. Uh, I'm gonna sell 28s. Uh, why don't I do that? I'll take more money in. I'll pay 165 to get these back. Can I get two bucks to sell the other ones, or 225, 250, 270? What can I get? How much more can I get? Should I write 27s or 28s? Uh, for the same time frame or a further out, sh should I buy back my my calls? Are they expiring in the next month? Should I now write calls another month out instead? Do I go from December's to January's or January's to February's? And I, again, I bring in more money. I, I take a different strike price and I add cash to my bank account. You have choices. Now, could that give you enough cash to buy a deep in the money call on GameStop? To write another call right away maybe that's the stretch strategy uh, or two calls i don't know you got, you're doing eight i don't know how much you can get out of it and so there you go okay um uh tiff i, I once uh, brought my big toe i once broke my big toe kicking a garbage can i don't recommend this to anybody uh, there you go. The Irishman. I loved watching that film. I loved it. I watched it again. Christmas Vacation. I watched that movie, says Matthew. Uh, Tiff, I actually watched The Firm last Friday. That was funny that you mentioned it a couple of hours ago. I watched the movie The Firm. Uh, another one is uh, good ones to watch, of course, are uh, Margin Call, uh, The Big Short, if you want to understand the markets a bit more. Yeah. David, I uh, got 625 for it, says uh, Dave. Um, Craig Savage of Wall Street. I watched a Christmas story for the first time ever. Finally sat through it. Christmas story. Um, Matthew, it, 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 it always gets me when Randy Quaid is in his underwear pumping his septic tank and smoking a cigar. <laughs> Randy Quaid. Oh, man. I got any the Craig Savage of Wall Street. I used to watch that film every Christmas. Um, I R Aaron. I watched the great film on Hulu uh, called In and, In and of Itself. Can't describe it briefly, but it was very good. Um, uh, let's see, DQ, Matthew, uh, something. Oh, no, yeah, something's full here. Uh, Resent, they're expiring December 16th. Ah, you see. So you could take a look at writing a lower call option, lower price, uh, uh, strike price, take more money for December. Or you could write a January, same strike or a lower strike. I'd probably recommend a bit of a lower strike uh, for more money. Uh, that might be a move. Uh, you're profiting nicely on this one. Uh, the old surfer, Cousin Eddie. Cousin Eddie. That's right. That's right. Uh, Radio Days. Watch Radio Days. Woody Allen film. I think you'd like that. Um, what else could you look at uh, uh, watching? Uh, uh, of course, my, one of my favorite movies of all time is My Favorite Year uh, with uh, Peter O'Toole. Uh, I love that movie. Tons of one-liners in that movie that have stayed with Jen and I forever. Um yeah, some of the movies you don't see all the time. You know, that's kind of what we're thinking about. Uh, pretty cool being stuff. Uh, we're only at 158 on the down now. We've given up about 30 points. Uh, we're down on S&P. We're down one point. NASDAQ's now down 61. We're backing off a bit on all three indexes at the moment. Oil down 208. Okay. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, Fun times. Uh, Alex, I'm number 193 on your thumbs up meter, pal. Good afternoon, everybody. I saw something today I wanted to show you. You're here, Alex, so I'm glad you're here. Uh, I know you have this, so uh, this is not new to you, but I want to share this today because um, Alex shares it with us every time he's here, which is fantastic. Uh, thank you, Alex, so much for being part of our channel. Uh, let me see if I can find this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There it is. Uh -uh. That was a great day. That was uh, that was uh, that was Alex and Jen and I uh, at in London. Uh, hanging out you can see it on his avatar just just down there down that here down here 
uh that was a great day really that was really enjoyable uh and it was just so great to catch up with them and uh, uh as it is any of you folks uh, we ever come across it's fantastic uh bad santa tis the season says flint creek a uh, splare i watched now i think on netflix or amazon senior year very funny she's going at 40 years again to school because of something special happened in between so eventually she was still 16. right on um nick uh can we get to 200 thumbs ups here folks uh splare very enjoyable to laugh for a lot of times uh, we have now um 197 thumbs ups on this channel that's not bad 197 man that is pretty cool bean stuff thank you all uh so much for um uh, for being part of our for part of our uh, uh channel here uh and helping me out uh definitely helping me out here getting us to the promised land love it uh <laughs> Take a look here. What's going on here? I just wanted to see if I had something else I can show everybody. Just bear with me, folks, as I work away here. Yeah, I don't think I have it. I think, I think that, uh, I think that uh splare tv and i we got together in uh in amsterdam and something tells me i'm not sure do we do i have a photo of us together or only do you oh no i have it here we go here we go all right <laughs> there we go there the, there we are we're the two troublemakers uh there we are right there uh fantastic man it was great meeting you splare the two of us in in Amsterdam together at the Amsterdam rail station, having just had a uh, uh, enjoying a, a, a Starbucks coffee together, that was great. We took a couple of those photos. That's fantastic. It was great to see him help. And of course, this is the one photo. This is a photo here uh, outside our hotel room in Amsterdam. This is what we had for our view out of our hotel room looking at this uh, canal just in front of our hotel, watching these uh, these tourist boats go by. And at the very bottom, our houseboats, those people are living full-time in those boats down there. Uh, condos across the way, offices, restaurants. It's unbelievable. Is it, this is downtown, well, near downtown Amsterdam, or more modern-day downtown Amsterdam. Unbelievable um, uh, to see this. This is a time-lapse uh, video I did. Uh, of 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 that same uh, sort of a similar scene. See if this will work. I don't know if it'll work. Uh, there it goes. Yeah, the time lapse version. It was fantastic. It was, it was just absolutely beautiful. Loved it, man. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being part of this man's channel um, and saying hi to us when you can. And we can get together, sir. Hoping we can do a get together in california pretty soon i sure hope we can do that um there you go okay um what else is going on um uh let's see <laughs> gamestop volume five hundred eighty thousand. <laughs> i know it's a half a day but wow alex good times bruce we had a great time in london once jen is all fixed up maybe we can meet at the top of the tower of london next i would love that uh, Brian, number 194, Alex, or maybe I'll come to California next time. Actually, that sounds much better. Yeah, maybe you should come to California. Larry, I know that Chinese restaurant. You're right next to Central Station. That's right. It was just over there. That's right. That's, we, were, we walked from it. Even with Jen's bad hip and knee, we walked from the station to the hotel. But when we left town, we took a cab <laughs> or an Uber. Uh, yeah, we did not. We did not do it the other direction. But when we got into town at midnight, we walked to the hotel, and, and Jen was a trooper on that. Splare, uh, DQ, I like to be in the background. Number three, number seven, it's not too stressful. <laughs> uh, there he is. Yeah, there's that avatar is, is Splare's photo. Uh, he took that photo of us, his selfie. Uh, right on, man. Right on. That was a good time. It's a great time. I loved, loved that trip we took last this past uh, May, June, July. Man, that was unreal. To be able to do that, um, a wing commander, Uncle Bruce. I think I'm going to need a one-on-one soon. 
could you fix me up? Uh, yeah, yeah, you bet. Uh, just uh, send me uh, send me a private email, and I'll I'll send you. I'll, I'll let you know when I'm available. I've got one slot for Sunday, and then next Sunday, I will be available. Yeah, I've got three slots for next Sunday, and we'll we'll get you looked after and get her done. We have an hour and twenty minutes to go, and the day will be done. The Dow is still holding a gain of 170 points. So it's really not trying to give anything back. Uh, the S&P is up a half a point. It's a nothing burger day here. We're up. We're down 54 on NASDAQ now. Um, and uh, uh, we've got oil now at 77.85 is what we're showing on oil. And that seems to be indicating a uh, virtual no change on the product. It's kind of weird how this is moving along. Um, ATIP is back to 50.3 cents a share, down three tenths of a penny on ATIP. Uh, Tesla's at 182.40, down 80 cents. Apple is still falling at 147.74, down 334. This is, I think, it's going to continue. Um, GameStop is up 13 cents to 2683. SoFi, 454.7, down 11.3 cents right now. Um, let's see. Uh, Gaiotti, Brian, that is insanely low. Wing Commander, by the way, Bruce. By the way, Uncle Bruce is so much fun in person. <laughs> it's a good time. <laughs> we, we had our meeting in uh, Munich. We got together with him in Munich. Um, I don't know. Did, did I get a photo of you in Munich? I don't remember. Um, I tell you, it's now so long since I've done all these this traveling. Uh, let's see if I can make this go through. There we go. We're through. Uh, we were through Berlin, and here's Munich. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Munich, Munich, Munich. Uh, let's see. Um, I know you, I'm certain you took photos, and I'm thinking Auntie Jen took photos of me, but I don't have anything on my phone. I don't have anything on my phone of us getting together, uh, Wing Commander, and you don't use a, you don't use a picture of you and I together, so I can't remember. Um, you may have taken a picture of us, uh, and of course, we don't, we don't show Jen's picture anywhere. We keep that private, but, uh. Um, I don't remember if you and I were were together for a photo or not. I can't remember. We were having too much fun talking about everything. Um, and the talk in Amsterdam was really mind-blowing. helped to understand these options a little, and it helped to understand Bruce's background and the why and how he can do it. Uh, we went over a lot of stuff in that session, didn't we? A wing commander, I can't make it the, I can't make it this Sunday. Probably next Sunday, rock and roll. Splare, by the way, do you, do you want me to send you the pictures I've made? Um Oh, you can always send them to me. Sure. Uh, just by email if you want. Sure. That'd be great. Uh, that's cool, pal. Fantastic stuff. Um, we've got uh, – uh, thank you all for being here. Um, never a dull moment here. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's amazing how much junk mail comes in on a day like today, isn't it? So much junk mail comes in on a day like today. Uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, John, I will get you your link to class 14 after I'm done today. No problem. And uh, we're good. We're gonna be, you'll be good to go. You can start studying on that one. Fabulous, everybody. Uh, 201 thumbs ups. So we've done it. It took a while, uh, but we got it done. 201 thumbs ups have come in. Thank you all so, so much. Uh, very appreciative. 130 of you here, 200 thumbs ups. Yeah, that's not easy to do. That's not easy to do. Uh, three hours and 12 minutes it took today to get 200. So, yeah, a, small, a much smaller audience than normal here today with a half a day only. Right on, guys. Um, oh, I sent a pic to you via email. Uncle Bruce, it's been a while, though. Got it. Okay, Wing Commander, I'll probably find it uh, there. Thanks, pal. If you can resend it, great, if you're able to do that. Uh, fantastic, guys. <laughs> Yeah, we met uh, we met uh, uh, we met um, met viewers in London. Met a viewer Amsterdam, of course, uh, and Munich. Uh, I don't think anyone else, unless I'm missing somebody. 
because uh, I didn't make it a tour for uh, you know to meet viewers. It was more of our vacation, but it happened to work out for a few viewers to kind of get together with them. Uh, so it looks like Spire, Smart Rent, ATIP, and then the Matterport are the winners of our SPACs, actually. There you go. Um, 2681 on GameStop, up 11 cents. NASDAQ down 45, S&P up 2.5, a little recovery here. Apple faces more iPhone supply woes on Foxconn unrest. Headline just coming through on Apple again. This does not stop. This, this news will keep coming out again and again and again until people get it or, you know, they stop paying attention to it. This is going to affect earnings on Apple. I'm convinced of it. Uh, I think the fourth quarter... And the first quarter will be down quarters from the year before. That means the PE multiple is higher right now. The stock will be under pressure. That's my personal opinion. We're down 319 at 147.88 today on a nothing day. Wait till Monday. Uh, more news will keep coming up, I think, about the, uh, the uh, mess at Foxconn in China. It's a mess over there. We'll see what happens. Uh, Slayer, Uncle Bruce, maybe you need an uh, uh, email that is not mentioned as somewhere online that said only for private context. Like, for example, writing relatives or maybe even one of us will be free from junk at the least. I know what you mean, my friend, um, but uh, uh, I, I, I handle it. I mean, we deal with it, um, and, you know, we block a bunch of these stupid sites, and so we try to keep it down. But uh, eventually I'll have people that I will hire to handle all my stuff you know, they'll feed me, they'll change my diaper, they'll ch change my email, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, uh, someone will take over everything sooner or later, and you won't have you won't have me complaining about it. <laughs> oh, man, a 179 gain on the Dow. It's trying to hold around, hold on up here, trying to hang around. Uh, we're up two points on S&P, down 45 on NASDAQ. That's the dealio. ATIP down three tenths of a penny. Um, we've got Tesla at 182.86 now, down 34 cents. Apple at 147.90, down 317. GameStop 26.86, up 16 whole cents. SoFi 455.6, down 10.4 cents. HPQ is up 29. Amazon up down 54. Home Depot. Up 690. Costco is up three cents. No, no, not Costco. Cisco. Cisco is up three cents. Pfizer's up 16. Netflix down 666. IBM up nine. Microsoft up seven. There you go. Um, okay. I know a guy. I know a guy that could help. And just say, I know a guy. A DQ, a Dave the Mac guy. You 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 change uh, adult diapers? Uh, oh no, it says DQ. Here we go. <laughs> I know a guy. Uh oh, uh, oh my! Uh, I don't want to go there. All right, back to uh, the markets. One eighty-one gain on the Dow right now. ATIP fifty point three cents down three tenths of a penny. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! What can I say on ATIP? Yep, yep, yep. Um, up fifteen on the GameStop twenty-six eighty-five. Just a nothing, nothing burger. The volume on GameStop, yep, 614,000. That's 150-something thousand shares pre-split. That's pretty dead quiet, isn't it? So far, 455 now, um, 20 million traded. Dead quiet day today. And that's expected. We should be quiet today. Not the diaper talk, please. No, says Credit Savage. Uh, Dave, DQ, depends on how much premium is involved. Wing Commander, I just sent you the email regarding our one-on-one. -on -one. Also, I uh, included a picture. Apologies in advance for that. DQ, Dave the Mac, it depends. I see what you did there. <laughs> depends. Depends. Uh, depends. Oh, geez, depends. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's an awesome photo. Oh, I love that. That's awesome stuff, man. Thank you. Um, let's see. How can I make that... Uh, Let's just do this. Hold on a second, kids. Let's see if I can make this. This is a quick one. This is a quick. This is this is how uh, non-technical uh, guys do this. This is me doing this. 
because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, useless. Um, okay, let, let me kind of work this out and go go there, go there, go there, and go here. Okay, okay. Uh, Wing Commander is here. Um, and here we go. <laughs> yeah. uh, Wing Commander and I. There we go. Look at that. Is that a good-looking guy or what? Wing Commander? You're looking like a million dang dollars there, buddy. That is awesome stuff. And you should see the car this guy drives. Oh, baby. That Audi was spot on fantastic. Uh, fabulous, man. Thank you so much for sending me that. I appreciate it. That's uh, the two of us in Munich with Auntie Jen. We had Andy Jen take that photo. That was great. And uh, looks like we've got, uh, what do we got here? Oh, I see. Oh, here it is. Uh, okay, we're on. All right. Uh, we're going on for a one-on-one, -on -one, buddy. Okay, I got you. We'll, we'll get you slotted in. Cool stuff. I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Uh, can't, I would love to go back to Europe again next year if that's possible. I want to get Jen on some cruise ships over there. A little combination. Uh, we have 206 thumbs ups. Thank you all. A little combination of land trip, uh, cruise, cruise vacation. Love to do something like that over there. That would be really cool. Uh, uh, fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Um, Splare, we get you those 500 more daily viewers, and then you can hire me with this special appointment for workers from other countries. I will keep the emails clean. <laughs> I'll hire you. I hire you. I got you. I, got you. I don't think the market has a pulse at the moment. Uh, Grant Savage, I'll give us the, the unrest in China due to Foxconn and protesters has the guard and police out beating workers. They don't get it. People just don't want to work under harsh conditions. Apple is going down. Brian, oh, so far it looks sort of like a normal 20 million trades, really kind of, you know. Oh, yes, feels like 67% of the market has forgotten that it is open today. Uh, Michael, RS4, uh, question mark. Anyway, there you go. Uh, yeah, 2676. 2676 on GameStop now. Um, we're only up six cents on GameStop now. Uh, the Dow is up 181. ATIP back to unchanged at 50. Point Five cents, 50 and a half pennies a share. ATIP unchanged again. Uh, Wing Commander, I've never had a picture taken of me by an A list celebrity before. And see how good those photos are? They know how to do this, you see. DQ, can you imagine the return emails written by Splare? If we were to get emails from Splare, we'd have to try to decode it like Uncle Bruce does. Flint Creek Soap Company, two good looking guys. Alex, uh, by the way, it's a big game in the World Cup today. England versus England versus USA. Splare DQ laughing. <laughs> oh man, SoFi four fifty five point eight down ten point two cents. The Dow down uh, now up one eighty five, holding on to the gains. Oh my goodness gracious, kids! So much fun. Uh, up three points on S&P. We're up. We're down 44 on NASDAQ. We're down to the final one hour, seven minutes in our trading day. We're coming to the last uh, uh, three, uh, last hour, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, we, we've got one hour and six minutes to go, and we're done for the day on this uh, session. So it's just one show today, one big, long show today to get us through the whole thing. Mike didn't even realize we still had a soccer team, says Michael. Um 192 gain on the Dow. It's trying to do something. I don't know. Um, Apple down 293. Uh, Tesla down 48 cents. ATIP unchanged. GameStop up 8 cents. SoFi down a dime at 1056. Slowly coming back up. HPQ up 30 to 20, 30.20 a share. Uh, Amazon uh, down 37 cents. Um, the Home Depot. Up 734 a share. Cisco up four cents. Pfizer up 16. Netflix is down 649 to $285. That's backed off from that what 315 range, 310. I can't remember what it got to. That's backed off. Uh, IBM up 15 cents. Uh, Microsoft down nine. Vanic down a buck and a quarter. Adobe down 270. Goldman up three. Google down a buck. Boeing up 296. Moderna down 74. Meta Platform down 95, ME down 4, Rocket Lab down 20, uh, Matterport down 3.5 cents. Um, we got uh, Smart Rent um, now, what is it? Uh, 
ah, I've got to sit on a pillow here. Uh, smart rent down a penny. Um, Spire up a half a penny. Very quiet here. Six tier up 11 cents to 190. Six tier all time low, 174. Not today, but that's been the all time low. We're at 190 a share on Six Terra right now. So it's still way down here. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm watching here with a 184 gain on the Dow today. Um, there you go. Um, <laughs> oh, um, Alex, you know, my mom is over here watching. She gets as uh, overexcited as Jen watching the Steelers uh, with, with soccer, with football. I got you. Uh, Mirko, at least Spire – or no, yeah, at least Flair – could send a bunch of emojis. Anyone would understand that. Well, there you go. If he were to handle my emails for me. And Mando, uh, thank you, Ogre Bruce, for the long show today. DQ, Michael, yeah, I, I, they're all players that are the other countries didn't want. That's who we have. Zach, I am number 205, pal, on your thumbs up meter. Glad to see you're still on Uncle B. Zeta State, Uncle Bruce, if SoFi does the reverse split, opinion would, would, be, would it be cheaper then? Well, Several things would happen. Uh, first of all, if if they did something like a, a five for one rollback, so for every five shares you have now, you'll have one share, and if you have five hundred now, you'd have a hundred. But the stock now would be recalibrated at around twenty to twenty five dollars a share because at four fifty six, multiply that by five, twenty two fifty twenty three dollars. You guys could now look at writing $25 contracts, but you'd only have one-fifth the number of shares. So you might write a $25 call good for a month or two. Maybe you can bring in $250 a share, $3 a share, $325 to $4 a share, depending on the premium. Um, that could spur a lot of action on the stock, a lot of action, which could make it go higher. We could move it into the $25, $27, $30 range now. Divide that by five, it's a $6 stock, right? You need to get to 50 to get the 10 again, right? But if you can now write calls that can bring you three, four dollars a call, and you can do rollovers on the way up or roll sh shifting gears on the way down. Hey, we're in business, we're in the SoFi option writing business. Now, many of you are sitting on a thousand shares, two thousand shares. 5,000 shares, and much more. But if you've got, you know, 2,000 shares of SoFi right now, and you end up with 400 SoFi, you're writing four calls. You may find that your SoFi is marginable, oh, which means you could buy more SoFi using your margin to write more options to pay down the margin. That's one. Two, you could look and try to buy five or ten dollar deep in the money options on sofi i mean if the stock's at 25 dollars and you can buy a ten dollar deep in the money call for 16 dollars, good for a year or two you'd buy that and write calls on that just like gamestop just like hbq i mean it's the same thing uh so quickly you'll generate revenue you know you'll be upset that you had the, the rollback but now you're in the option business now, for those of you who have 10,000 shares, you'll end up with 2,000 shares. Again, I'm assuming a five-for-one split. I don't know what it would be, but if it was five-for-one, you'd have 2,000 shares. You can write 20 calls. Now, can you bring in 350 a call on 20 calls? That's seven grand. You're bringing in $7,000 on your stock. And guess what you do with that? You can buy stock with that or deepen the money calls with that to write more calls. So all of a sudden, some of you might go, okay, I'm going to use my shares to write calls, to bring in money, to buy more deep in the money calls on SoFi, to write more calls. I'll always keep my 2,000 shares, but I want to add now deep in the money calls on top of that to write more options on my SoFi to let me leverage up my earnings. And some of you out there who are going, geez, I got 30,000 shares and I want to quit my day job. Man, if I had 6,000 shares, I could write 60 calls. I could take the 60 call premiums and turn around and buy 10 deep in the money calls, 15 more, 20 more, maybe. Maybe I can write 80 calls at a time now. Can I quit my day job with this kind of cash flow coming in? Changes everything. Everything. So is it a bad thing? Maybe not. 
Maybe it's not a bad thing. Because if you do a five-for-one rollback, there's only 150 amount of stock out there that can trade now. That means to flip 100 or 1,000 shares at a time, uh, That's uh, there's only so many paper pieces of paper around out there, as we like to say. That could run the market. That could run the market. Option writers, don't fear the upside. We write. We're happy to write against it. We'll roll up. Let's keep it going. Uh, it could be interesting. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, okay. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, Susan Shop's about. I am thumbs up number 209. Thank you, everybody, for these thumbs ups. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, DQ, why does Uncle Bruce keep sending back these emojis when I try to get a one-on-one -on -one time slot? I don't do that. I don't do that. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? Susan uh, shops about Bruce. Are you still on? Um, spent the whole morning shopping. Came on to see what I missed. So happy you're still. It's bagel time. I've been here the whole morning. Mirko, uh, Uncle uh, Michael H. It, it, it's a football. It's football rest of the world. Only you guys are calling it soccer. Because you name a game football that is mostly played with your hands. Strange what world we live in. Yeah. Michael Merkel, either true. It's true. Americans don't make sense at times. I mean metric. Come on now. Alex uh, Merkel, I don't think I'll ever get used to the idea of England having a better football team than Germany. No, I'll never get used to it. There you go. A splare. DQ is probably ordering too much slots for a bunch of weekends where already one is planned. In that case, emoji would make sense. Or, uh, or like in Little Britain, the show computer says no. <laughs> okay, okay. Mirko, uh, yeah, no, I don't send emojis back to people when they send me an email. He's he's making that up. Uh, he's lying. Uh, okay, 174 gain on the Dow, right near at around the high. Two point gain on SP, 44 point drop on NASDAQ. Oil down 225 to 77.79. I don't know what oil's quotes are about half an hour ago. They were all gooped up, all gunked up, screwed up, everything all just yuck. I don't know. ATIP, 50 cents a share, down one half of one penny. Tesla down 91. Apple down 270. GameStop down 5 cents to 26.65. We're red on GameStop. SoFi down 9 cents, 457. Interesting. Mm, yeah, okay. Yeah, football starts with a kickoff. So football. It, it, it isn't amazing to me. You watch the Super Bowl with all the hype, all the hype, all the hype, all the hype for hours, hours, days, weeks. And then they have the kickoff for the Super Bowl game, and the kicker kicks it through the end zone. And then they have commercials because they got to set, get to set the ball on the whatever the yard line because there are no kickoff returns anymore. One of the most exciting plays in all of football has been eliminated. And the other one that's been eliminated, onside kicks. That is now the most boring thing in the world, onside kicks, all eliminated. It has been just decimated. The NFL has absolutely decimated itself. And then it comes to interpreting a catch for a touchdown. They have decimated their credibility all over the place. It is a laughing stock of sport. Uh, I find it so pathetic. Uh, what can I say? Um, is it football or soccer in Canada? You do have the CFL. Yeah, we call it the Canadian Football League. So it's Canadian football, and then we have soccer. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, Canadian football is, is a whole lot different than the NFL, but it's still a similar kind of game, but, oh, it's a lot different. Uh, Michael, we invented it. We get to name it laughing out loud. Uh, DQ, uh, Gaudi, the Egg Toss League would, sh would sue the NFL. Um, uh, Zach, uh, the history of the word soccer is actually attributed to the English. Uh, I read that the other day. Michael, due to brain mush, uh, Gaudi, people's brains turning into pu pudding is hurting the NFL. There you go. Welcome one and all to the channel. Uh, the final hour of trading is underway. We have 56 minutes to go, and we appreciate you being here. We're up 180 on the Dow. We're up two points on S&P, and we're down 46 on the NASDAQ exchange. Um, Barron says, headline, Apple's iPhone supply issues could hit revenue. Why analysts say not to worry? And I think the analysts are probably saying, they're not going to another brand. Uh, if you can't get your iPhone in a timely time frame, you'll wait to get your iPhone when it's ready. I agree with that to a degree. I, I have no problem with that statement. What I have a problem with is you 
forward earnings losses into the third quarter, fourth quarter, the first, second, and third quarter of next year, you are talking about a much higher PE multiple for the stock, not justifying its current value. You can play the game of, well, it's going to be worth this much because they're going to get their phones eventually. Um, I don't buy that. I, I don't. Uh, opportunity lost is opportunity lost. And um, Apple might decide to cut back the amount of shares they do a buyback on. They won't say anything. They'll say, we have a $90 billion buyback program, and they won't comment on it, but they won't buy it back. They'll stop buybacks to preserve cash on hand. They might play that game, and nobody, only the insiders on Wall Street will know, we're not getting orders from Apple to buy back their stock. Are you getting orders to buy it back? I'm not. Are you getting? Oh, I'm not. They're not buying back their stock. That's when the market goes crazy. They panic. And down goes the stock, despite you know trying to do the right thing commercially and for the for the company and all that. Stocks will react negatively here. I'm just saying. Um, Alex, gotta run everybody. Have a great weekend. Enjoy some libations. I'll see you at the Discord. Alex, thanks, pal. You have a good one, and I'll uh, we'll get you set up here. Uh, Splair, the key problem: American football, something in between handball and soccer. You don't really use your foot on the one side, and on the other side, you defend the ball with the hands on the other side. DQ, Commercial Concussion League. A uh, fool of a tool took. There was actually a kickoff return for a touchdown in the Pats Viking game last night. That's true. It's one of the most exciting plays in football. But yeah, they mostly kick through the end zone. I do miss the big special team plays. Credit Savage. Androids are better phones. Uh, there, I said it. What I would love to see fool of a took would be you, you, uh, the kickoff. That ball must bounce once in bounds, and you can't kick it out of bounds. So you can't kick a kickoff through the end zone. You can only kick a kickoff that must bounce once in the field of play in front of the players. And the first player has to be 10 yards back or whatever, um, however they want to do it. So you, know, you kick from the 25-yard line or 20-yard line. The first players are at the 35 or the 40 and all the way back. But the kicker has to bounce the ball one time. If you did that, that changes everything. Now there will be no balls going through the end zone at all. Virtually none. Uh, Credit Savage of Wall Street. Androids are better phones. There I said it. Okay. Fool of a took. Uh, one bounce. That would be chaos. I'd enjoy that. Uh, DQ. Everything is an onside kick. Um, that would be interesting. I agree with that. And I think that... Uh, 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 the uh, the NFL should go back to the way it used to be for onside kicks. You can load up one side all you want. It doesn't matter where you line them up. Uh, I think that's a dumb rule to take it away. I love the wild, wild west of onside kicks. I loved it. High drama at the end of a game. It was so cool. Um, what can I say? What? I just, that's just me, though. That's just the old man. Uh, 165 um, uh, point gain on the Dow. We have a slight, slight pullback. Uh, S&P is negative, just barely a tenth of a point. And NASDAQ is now down 53. So NASDAQ is slipping. The Dow is slipping. S&P has been slipping the last five minutes. Okay. Uh, um, Splare to the early leaving bagels. Enjoy the weekend out there. Michael, don't forget, less commercials. It's uh, unwatchable. I hear you. Cody, remember that onside kick in the Super Bowl the Saints pulled off at the start of the second half? Uh, Cody, the start said, that's right. Uh, uh, Chris says, what ruined the NFL is having men that never played a single down make decisions pretending the game, um, and the ones that did play who make decisions have dementia. Herschel Walker, it's sad. Uh, DQ, I um, uh, can, uh, can watch every play of the game in about 40 minutes, in NFL+. Plus. Yeah, I like the I like that red zone, uh, the NFL red zone. I love that. No commercials, just action from six games at the same time. I love that. Um, Michael, DQ, I just watched red zone now. There, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, red zone. Um, up 158 on the Dow. We're dropping again uh, a little bit, bit more. Um, ATIP still at 50 cents. Tesla 182.39. Apple 148.06. GameStop down eight cents, twenty six sixty two. Low of the day, twenty six forty. Uh, could we hit a new low on GameStop today? Maybe. So far, four fifty seven down eight and a half. We're getting better. We're getting better. Okay. 
Uh, go. To, I just watch condensed games or highlights on Reddit now. Don't have time to watch four hours of commercials. Uh, Brian, rugby is the best sport, hands down. Real men play rugby or real women. Ha, ha. Uh, the Credit Savage, Red Zone is actually a lot of fun. Gaiote, I played many sports in school, baseball, basketball, football, lacrosse. Baseball was my favorite. Gaiote, uh, but I wasn't very good at it. Um, uh, Brian, did the earnings for GameStop change dates? Anyone have the down low on this? Um, I don't know. Does anybody know? When does when does GameStop come out with their uh, numbers? Um, it's soon, isn't it? It's like real soon. I thought the first week of December it was coming out. That would be next week. I thought. Does anyone anybody know? Let me know. All right. Uh, One sixty gain on the Dow, and that's where we're at. We're down nine on uh, GameStop to twenty six sixty one. Twenty one cents away from the low of the day. Uh, DQ. Uh, I watch dodgeball on ESPN eight. Oh boy, um, uh, Michael, bold move, cotton, bold move, cotton. I don't know what that means either. Okay, uh, there you go. Mm, 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 mm. BZ, uh, DQ, FNA, um, the old surfer, the NFL red zone is great. Live and no commercials. DQ, let's see if it works out for them. And Zach, uh, the Oko. I don't know what I don't know what people are saying. I don't know what they're talking about. Over my head, one sixty-two gain on the Dow. That's it. Uh, Forty-eight point loss on Nasdaq. One point gain on S and P. Oh boy. Um, yep, yep, yep. Twenty-six sixty-one on GameStop. Um, okay, that uh, December the sixth. For GameStop, I thought, said Richard. DQ, Uncle Bruce. We're quoting the movie Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Oh, I see what's going on. Doc Odie. Brian Nasdaq says estimate of 12 14 for GameStop earnings. So 6, the 14th. I thought it was the first week, but you know, whatever. It's coming. It's coming. I don't know. Uh, uh, uh. That's what we got. The Dow up 167 here. 48 minutes left in our session today, and the suffering is over for the week. A lot of contracts expire today, of course, but not as many as last week and not as many as on December 16th. The third Friday of every month is when most contracts die. So a bunch will die today, of course. Uh, we're down 299 on Apple. Tesla is down $0.68. Cents. ATIP is back to $0.50 cents a share. SoFi 457 down nine cents. Um, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball, says Zach. Brian, yes, it was December 6th, but I read it pushed out a week, like uh, Goyote is saying. Goyote, you think it would be easier to find a concrete date? Laughing out loud. Uh, I guess I don't. I don't understand what what the deal there is. Uh, the fives, uh, the five Ds: dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge. Right, nothing's easy when it comes to GameStop except buying cheaper shares all the time. Yay, there you go. There it is, uh, 26.56, down 14 cents. We're 16 cents away from the low of the day. The stock is definitely taking a backing off approach here. Uh, we were over 26, uh, almost 26.90 half an hour ago, uh, 30 minutes, 20 minutes ago. We're dropping here, 26.56, coming down. Okay, uh, when when I Google, I get 14th of December for GameStop, says Splare. DQ, Uncle Bruce, you and AJ would like that movie, Dodgeball. We may have seen a clip or two, but I don't think we've watched it. No. Oh, boy. Mm. All right. Such fun times at the table. Such fun, fun, fun. Mm, okay. So far, down eight and a half to four fifty-seven and a half. There we have it. Okay. Well, what else is going on here? I don't know if there's much else to uh, to highlight here. Uh, it, it's going to be a nothing day. It was supposed to be a nothing burger day. Uh, so you know, not seeing too much happening. I I can envision I envision a pullback on the Dow towards the end of the day. I envision it. I don't know if that's truly going to happen, but I envision it. Um, um, uh, 
Japan team goes viral after cleaning World Cup locker room, leaving origami gifts. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Um, yep. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know. Not much to talk about today, as expected. There shouldn't be a lot to talk about today on this uh, market. Uh, interest rates are mainly one tenth of a percentage point difference, nothing to worry about the euro is virtually unchanged at 104 the pound is at 121 unchanged we'll see what happens next week if anything oil down 247 to 77.57 oil has been uh, the, the loser today uh so far uh for sure it's been a loser today okay uh yeah not much else to uh, to uh, report there um uh, Thank you. GameStop might need uh, some time to explain their NFT status, says Richard. Yeah, count all the pennies, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if they're making any money on it or not. I really don't know. Um, what can I say? Uh, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, it is what it is what it is. Uh, folks, I'm going to take a little break, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, I'm going to give you a, a short little video to watch. This won't take much time, though, so the, the screen will go blank by the time I get back to you. But uh, uh, I've just got to take a little pause here, so I'll see you next Okay, I'm back. Don't don't pay the ransom. Uh, I didn't get kidnapped. I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you all for waiting me out. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, we're back for the the final 40 minutes here of this uh, dealio uh, of our day. Uh, yeah. 
Brian, you are right. GameStop earnings are always snorefest. Just need to see the funny in the green. Um, there's some red coming into GameStop, says Coyote. 26.46. We're heading for the low of the day here. Uh, we might, uh, yeah, 26.40 to 43 is the low of the day today. We're definitely coming into it. Uh, not a lot of volume, obviously. 733,000. Uh, 26.46 last trade at the moment. The Dow still up 171, 169 now. We've got uh, S&P up three quarters of a point. Nasdaq down 51. Uh, that's what I see going on right now. Not a lot to get excited about there. 2646 on GameStop. ATIP is up three tenths of a penny to 50.8 cents. Your ATIP is headed to the moon now. No stopping it. It's going to 20 bucks a share. Here we go. All right, let's roll. roll go, 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 go. Um, hey, I'm a, at least I'm cheerleading it. Um, Larry Titus loves the fireworks. Richard. I'll keep writing on GameStop in the meantime. Uh, uh, Richard, uh, take a pee, Uncle Bruce. Uh, uh, Gaiotti, abruptly coming back to the empty chair is actual peak comedy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where did Bruce go? Well, guess what Bruce did. Uh, guess what he did. Guess what he did. Guess what he's been on the air for over uh Four, almost four hours. Where's Bruce? There's no Bruce. There's only Zool. Um, uh, he's buying more ATIP. He's putting his own order in. Uncle Bruce, you are the best. Uh, always sharing with us until the end. <laughs> uh, uh, there you go. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're, we're, we're back. Um, 165 gain on the Dow. 0.3 of a penny, penny gain on ATIP. We're down 56 on Tesla. We're down 316 on Apple. GameStop down 24 cents to 26.46, um, down 24 cents. SoFi 4.59 down 7 cents. It's it's slowly recovering from the low of the day. The SoFi low was 4.51. We're at 4.59. Uh, that's where we're at right now. 23 million traded at the, this point, as I can see. Uh, HPQ 30.16 up a quarter right here uh there you go pfizer up 15 cisco down eight um and uh, let's take a look at our indexes here yeah the dow 168 to positive um one point positive on s p we're not going anywhere and we're down 49 on nasdaq there you have a 261 drop on oil there you go um uncle bruce you're the goat just staying with us like the old days dq Guess no diapers yet. Uh, Karim, uh, wait. Uncle Bruce bought ATIP. What? 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 What's this? Rumors. What? Uh, One sixty-six gain on the Dow. Ha! <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching GameStop just above the low of the day. Twenty-six forty-six, around six cents away from the low of the day on the old GameStop. Will it give up ground, or will it rally from here, or will it just sit here? Uh, we have 37 minutes of hell left to go. <laughs> then we get the weekend to relax, energize, rest up, check out my classes, uh, and get yourself educated. And uh, let's get this party started next week and we start writing even more contracts. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, fantastic. John, I will send you class 14 to that address you'd want. Uh, no problem, buddy. We'll set you up and uh, we'll get you we'll get you squared away, okay? Thank you for uh, ordering class 14 today. We'll set you up. Good stuff. 2650 on GameStop. Hanging on, hanging on. Oh my gosh. Um, a 165 gain on uh, on the Dow right now. Okay, everybody. Welcome. To the party, pal. Welcome to the party. Uh, what can I say? The party continues on. Mm, 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 mm. Yep. Roadblock, I guess. Okay. Um, yep, 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 yep. Okay, what, what, here's movie trivia for you. What movie is this line from? Um, do you do you uh, do you make money? Uh, I make maps. Any idea what that movie's from? What what's that movie from? You, you make money? I make maps. 
<laughs> uh, roadblock, I guess. Uh, that's right. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Six stairs up to 187. I never thought I'd, I'd get to say that. Did anyone manage to get SoFi at 451 out there? Uh, Brian, this is an arm folding kind of a day. Just yet watching depreciation come in, don't isn't it? It's just one of those days. Uh, yep. Uh, I honestly don't know what that movie, what what this movie's from. Um, Roadblock, I guess. Uh, uh, let's see what other what other lines from that movie. Uh, um, uh, Uncle Bruce and the cartographer. Uh, Kareem, Uncle Bruce, do you tell your friends you're a mentor, advisor, YouTube, wealth advisor, what? Uh, they know me as a YouTuber, and they know I talk about the stock market and traveling. Uh, i got the two channels. I know, I know. It's Starman. Yes, it is. It's Starman with uh, with Jeff Bridges. Uh, it was. It is Jeff Bridges, isn't it? And uh, also with... Uh, with uh, Oh, the gal who was in the, uh, was in uh, Indiana Jones, um, uh, the temp, uh, the uh, the uh, the Holy Grail, uh, Karen, uh, what's her name? Uh, you know, co-star, uh, not Gremlins too. No, no. Uh, way to go, Matthew. Um, what was her name? Karen Allen. Yeah, Karen Allen starred in that movie with Bridges. Uh, with I think it's Jeff Bridges. I love that movie. I I really did. Love that movie. Um, uh, that was uh, that was like 1980, 81. Like that's a long time ago, um, ahead of its time in a way, um, or you know, right in its time. I don't know. That was a, I really enjoyed that movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, green light go, red light stop, yellow light go very fast. That's right. Um, uh, I get a gold star. That's right. <laughs> Coyote says that wasn't done in 1984, that movie. Wow. Uh, Bruce, have you ever listened to, to Conan O'Brien's podcast? He has an episode with Dana Carvey where Dana does a bunch of impressions, and Jeff Bridges is one of them. Absolutely hilarious. Anything that that guy Dana Carvey does is pretty good. Huh? He's really great. I haven't uh, listened to podcasts. I have no time. But I have seen some odd videos and stuff. And, and I, of course, I really enjoy Dana Carvey with Jerry Seinfeld when comedians in cars get coffee. He was his guest. I mean, Jerry couldn't breathe. I mean, Bert, Jerry was running out of air laughing so hard with the, uh, Dana Carvey just riffing off one after the other. So funny. Oh, my. DQ, wow. I haven't seen Starman since I owned a VHS player. That's right. Um, yeah, just a little, just a little bit. He, great movie. Brian, Uncle Bruce is the YouTuber. The YouTuber, he says, uh, Fool of a Tuck, the podcast is Conan Brian needs a friend. Uh, Goyote, Matthew, star for you. Zach, now, saw Starman in the theater. Yeah, um, I, I try and remember the first time I saw Starman, and I I don't think it was a theater. I think Jen and I watched it on a VCR. I've seen that movie, I'm sure I've seen it at least 20 times. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed that movie. Uh, cool. Funny. Poignant, um, revealing, really neat, really well done. For its for an '84 movie, man, that is something. Yeah, that is something. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a great show. Great, great show. Hmm. My earliest theater memory was 1999, seeing Star Wars Episode Number One. <laughs> Oh my! I remember going into uh, movie theater for uh, um, the Empire Strikes Back, which I think is number two. Um, the, the which what one number four or number five in the whatever you know what I mean the second movie they made in what nineteen eighty or whatever it was. I remember going to that show on a Friday night maybe. Uh, it had just come out, and uh, Jen and I lined up to go in and. We were in row number two. <laughs> Fuck this much. Uh, loved it. Loved it. Uh, just loved it. Um, Empire Strikes Back was five, but yeah, it was the second film, right? Yeah. Um, Zach, uh, go to minus Star Wars as well, but it was Empire. 
Coyote, I would love to see that in the theater. It's probably my favorite film of all time. Uh, yeah, great, great show. Um, really highly anticipated. I watched the movie Arthur um, at least 10 times in the first month it was out uh, with uh, Dudley Moore. I love that movie. The one-liners in that movie, oh, my God. Uh, Coyote, Empire Strikes Back, and Godfather 2, best sequels ever. And um, enjoyed the movie number 10, movie t the movie 10 with Dudley Moore. That was that was enjoyable. Of course, that's a 78, 1978-79 release. That's going back. Um, they don't make movies like that anymore. <laughs> Those days gone by. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's interesting how movies changed. From the late '70s into the mid '80s, they really evolved dramatically. They changed in their style and their technique. They really, the storytelling really changed, and of course, it changed again as more and more high tech features became available. Obviously, but uh, yeah, yeah, Jen and I used to go to the movies all the time because prior to 1984, we didn't have a VCR, so to see something new, we had to go to the theater, and we lived downtown. In downtown Calgary, so we could walk to ten movie theaters in ten minutes, fifteen minutes. We could be in any one of ten, so it was easy for us to go and see a show. And if we went on a weekend, we could get free parking downtown because the office towers are all empty. So you could drive your car into downtown Calgary. It'd be thirty below out. Drive your car to a underground parkade. Keep your car nice and warm. See the show in an indoor environment. Uh, back to the car and then drive back to our downtown apartment building with underground heated parking. We never went outside. <laughs> Those are the days. Uh, Gaiotti, my dad used to tell me how he saw Pet Cemetery in theaters. There was a cemetery right outside his bedroom window. He said he would sleep with kitchen knives under his pillow. He was so scared. Oh, man. Uh, DQ, uh, by the way, Jay Dare has posted the Call Rugman song on Discord. Someone's going to have to send me an email of that. Uh, Matthew, uh, Pixar and DreamWorks took it to the next level for animation. True. <clears throat> Credit Savage. Arthur is awesome. Uh, I was just a kid in El Salvador who only understood the words hello and goodbye, but the song came like it was the coolest. And now Christopher Cross is always in Reno, so we can listen to him. JR, uh, yes, the song video is live. Uh, right on. Uh, Coyote, not Pet Cemetery. Night of the Living Dead by George Romero. Got them mixed up. JR, I'll send you a link on email, Uncle Bruce. Thank you, JR. Appreciate it. I'll look forward to that. Oh, and Arthur, I just, oh, I love that movie. John Gilgood and uh, Liza Minnelli and all the, the support staff they had. It was so funny. Really great. Um, Cindy, I saw Godfather at the drive in with my parents back when cartoons were so shown first, and the kids probably should just close their eyes. Or go to sleep. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! I remember. Uh, uh, I was just. I was thinking of another movie that uh, I remember watching. Uh, you know, I just now it's escaped me. Oh my gosh! I remember the first Superman with Christopher Reeves watching that, and coming out of the movie theater in downtown Calgary with all the skyscrapers looking like that. Going, I don't see one. Up, I don't see him up there. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, watching the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Indiana Jones movies, uh, watching the first one in the theater, uh, the second one, which is a disappointment, but the third one, I think I, I think we watched in the theater. Uh, I think we would have, would not have waited. I remember watching the fugitive in a movie theater with, uh, for, uh, for, uh, um, um, Harrison Ford, uh, watching that movie. I really enjoyed that. Um, Gaiotti, oh, man, the scene with Sonny getting lit up at the toll booth must have scared those kids straight. Uh, I saw E.T. in a the theater, me too, uh, several times. Uh, I actually saw the first SW movie when it came out in 77, the year I graduated from high school, Star Wars movie. Uh, yeah, the the E.T. movie, um, Back to the Future, in the theater. I think I watched... Uh, Back to the Future in the theater once or twice. And then as soon as the video came out, I would rent that video time and time again. Yeah, uh, the Chris Savage, I didn't kill my wife. I don't care. That's right. I didn't kill my wife. Tommy Lee Jones won an Oscar. 
Carson Ford, Butkus got nothing. Unbelievable. Uh, one couldn't win without the other. Yeah. Uh, Titanic in the theater uh, with an intermission. Oh, my God. I'm trying to remember if we watched Titanic in a theater or not. I don't remember. Um, I don't really remember for sure. Yeah, can't I can't tell. Can't remember that one. That was my first uh, doubleheader on Lion King and Toy Story back in 1995. Toy Story is still my favorite movie, says Brian. Zach, I watched Back to Back uh, uh, the Future. Back to I watched Back to the Future on VHS a lot, but it was recorded off of Showtime. Oh, I got you right. Okay. <laughs> Right on, right on. Oh yeah, those days, those eighties and nineties. Oh my gosh, those were those were times. Um, yeah, I mean, who, who? Do you remember the last time you ever taped anything off of live television? Do, do any of you ever remember taping the last time you taped anything on TV off of TV uh, on a, on a VCR? Uh, that's a long time ago for Jen and I. I, I can't. I honestly can't remember the last time we did tape it. It would have been Jennifer maybe taping a Disney movie for our daughter, maybe. I can't remember anything else. I had the Star Wars trilogy from the 90s growing up. I wore those tapes out so badly. I watched them nearly every week. Fool of a Took. Um, has anyone ever seen Wrongfully Accused with Leslie Nielsen? Spoof of the Fugitive. Love me some Leslie Nielsen. Oh, he's hilarious. DQ Richard Pryor, the toy. A Gaiote fool that took Leslie Nielsen is the best. Zach DQ masturbates. <laughs> fool of a took. I was the one armed, one legged, one eyed man. Uh, Zach, not since the DVR became a thing. We haven't recorded anything. This Credit Savage of Wall Street. Oh gosh, I remember sneaking into my first R rated movie and watching Basic Instinct. I had no idea. I just thought it was a thriller. It went in a boy came out of the theater with a mustache. <laughs> Brian, my brother and I used to tape music videos on Much Music. Uh, those are, these were our mixtapes. Oh my, uh, Larry, I used to record Jerry Springer in high school so I could watch Smut TV when I got home. Mirko, is there a fourth, is there fourth of after, is there, what fourth of after Mark Mercury or or also shorter, uh, 4-H of aftermarket today. Or I don't know what's going on here. Um, Gaiotti, the Credit Savage of Wall Street, laughing. Karim, I had to leave really quickly to watch the Rugman video. Awesome. Um, DQ, the Credit Savage of Wall Street. So did Deuce's wife. Uh, Deuce's wife and, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I remember watching James Bond movies in the theaters. Uh, I remember those in the 70s. Um, I believe I watched, um, I would have watched three or four James Bond movies, uh, as I grew older. I was probably 15 or 16 when I watched my first James Bond movie in a the theater. And then Jen and I would have watched James Bond in the theater up until about 85, 86. And then it would be DV, VHS only. We just wait for the, you know, the video to come out and then watch it then. Especially after our darling daughter was born, then it was game over. Yes, um, uh, Leslie Nielsen, the uh, Police Squad movies. Uh, that's right. Uh, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Does anyone remember using tracking to adjust the uh, picture quality fuzziness on VHSs? It used to leave an imprint on my finger from holding it for so long. Mirko, uh, four hours after market, like on normal trading days. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to be here till the close, and that's it. I'm not sure if anyone's asking me something there. I sell my house fast enough, remember. Now we take live TV on DVR all the time. We almost never watch live TV. Uh, there you go. Uh, Mirko, thanks, fool. Um, a fool of a took. DQ, Deuce had to leave. He was here earlier. Uh, Gaiotti, uh, Chris, have a transformation during Basic Instinct. That was a transformation. Gaiotti, Mirko, yep, four hours of aftermarket of aftermarket until 5 p.m. Eastern. Gaiotti, uh, anyone remember di disguising CRT monitors? Disguising, dis de degaussing CRT monitor? Um, uh, Credit Savage, uh, Gaiotti, exactly. I almost asked the guy, the lady next to me for a cigarette, but that would have been pushing. <laughs> 
I remember watching the movie Airport in the movie, uh, in the movie theater. I really enjoyed that. That movie had just been out about a week or so. I was uh, 14 or 15, 15, and I really enjoyed that movie. Dean Martin and uh, George Kennedy, uh, Bert, Bert Lancaster. Uh, that was a great, that was a great show in the theater way back then. I had read the book already, so I was ready for that. Um, uh, yep, 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 yep. Um, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> people are saying stuff. Forget it. I'm not commenting on the comments. Uh, what else did I watch in the theaters that I recall? Um, uh, oh my. Um, oh, watching the uh, Richard Pryor and, uh, and, um, um oh gosh bruce uh the guy that played um with zero mustel um he played uh oh bruce come on uh he played the the candy merchant uh in that movie with the candy kids the candy with the magic chocolate bar uh the golden chocolate bar you remember that movie willy wonka the guy who played willy wonka remember him he and Richard Pryor did a couple of movies together. Uh, those were funny. Uh, way back, but that was way back when. Mon, Mon, Monadu, Mondu, Mondu 5. Go ATIP. Well, 52 cents. What, one and a half cents? We're rocking 18 cents, 18 minutes to the close, and ATIP is rocking up. Uh, Tesla 182, 83. Apple down 315. GameStop down 35 cents. 26, 35. New low. New low of the day on GameStop. The uh, game stops low of the day, 26.33. We're at 26.35 right now, the low of the day range. Here we are. How about that? Uh, thank you guys uh, so much uh, to see you here. Predator. Remember Predator? Uh, and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? Um, Wayne Command, I got to run. We need some folks. Enjoy your weekend. We'll watch the rest later on. Great show. Uncle love your stories. Thank you, buddy. Gene Wilder. Thank you. Gene Wilder. Couldn't think of that name. Credit Savage, oh, God, Airplane was amazing. I lost it when there was such a huge line to smack that lady to get a grip. Oh, that was Airplane. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The guy with the wrench and the nurse holding a hammer had me in stitches. And then there was then there was the Airplane. That that was Airplane. But um, what was the movie with uh, Dean Martin and uh, and uh, George, uh, you know, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, was it Air? Air? Air oh, that was Air? Air? Airport. Airport, uh, the movie Airport uh, with Dean Martin and George Kennedy and Burt Lancaster. That movie was the one I remember. Airplane, yes, loved it. Also watched in the theater, uh, Blazing Saddles in a movie theater. Hilarious. Oh, my God, that was so funny. Big Gene Wilder says DQ. Hear no evil, see no evil, Silver Streak. Exactly. And also the one in the, um, the um, prison. Remember that one in the prison? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a woman. A Lorraine, I like the War of the Roses. Oh, my gosh. Gene Wilder. I remember that. Gene Wilder. Blazing Saddles is my favorite Gene Wilder movie. The, excuse me, miss. I speak jive. I speak jive. Blazing Saddles was insane. Blazing Saddles is great. Brian, anyone seen um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? Great comedy. Saw that in the movie. Theater. Loved it. Cindy B., I am serious. And uh, don't call me Shirley. Um, uh, this player, I'm too young for that cinema stories. I think my first movie was Cars from Disney, but I'm addicted to the older Star Wars movies now uh, as well, and to Lord of the Rings. Credit Savage, uh, they didn't, they don't make comedy like that anymore. No, the old surfer DQ. That line is great from Mrs. Cleaver. <laughs> That's who she was. Love Blazing Saddles. Uh, those aren't pillows. Uh, where you, where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> Chris Savage Blair, just sit back and take notes, kid. Write down these movies and watch them. You're welcome. Uh, 16 minutes to go, and we're done. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Spaceballs, great, hilarious movie. Absolutely. Blair, Dean Martin, I know from Fallout, uh, from Fallout in New Vegas. Uh, Dean Martin, yeah, the, starred as uh, Air, Airport, started in Airport. They made four spinoffs after that, at least. Airport 77 and Airport 79, and I don't know what else they did. But the first one was the one. It was the best movie, Airport, from 1977 or 78. I can't remember. Uh, it was way back when. 
Spaceballs is prequel for Star Wars, right? Ha! <laughs> Lame duck. A uh, Christmas story. Another one is the uh, the Muppets Christmas movie. Uh, one of uh, Jen's favorite movies of all time. Uh, the Muppets Christmas movie. Absolutely fantastic. We are down to 15 minutes to go, and they will be done. We're only at 145 on the down now. ATIP holding a one penny gain. Tesla at 182.43. Apple down 312 to 147.95. GameStop 26.41 down 29 cents uh trying a little rally so far down 6.7 cents at 459.3 credit savage john candy was the man space balls was crazy uncle buck another great john candy movie uncle buck and uh splash the movie splash with tom hanks and john candy fantastic you shoot your eye out kid uh lame duck fried fred claus is now my favorite says lame duck uh, Splash with Tom Hanks was a great show. Um, and uh, um, uh, DQ Piggy Pudding. Uh, figgy Pudding. Uh, it's made with figs and bacon. <laughs> oh, man. The Great Outdoors was a classic candy movie, too, with, uh, with Dan Aykroyd uh, in that role. Um, oh, my. John Candy, phenomenal, just absolutely phenomenal actor. Um, Brian Lame Duck, The Muppets uh, Christmas. Um, I think it's called Had the Muppets and Sesame Street. It was uh, it was a cable special, I think, from the late 80s, my favorite Christmas movie. Uh, Credit Savage, uh, Throw Mama from the Train was hilarious, too. Martin is in it as well. Richard Garland, uh, Spaceballs was loco. So stupid it was funny. Uh, I'll never forget that movie. Um, and um, when Harry met Sally, enjoyed that movie. Um, the diner scene with uh, Meg Ryan. Um, <laughs> just fantastic movies way back when. Uh, DQ, if I can get a dessert down, um, uh, down him, can you throw a couple of Paul Bunyan hats in for the kids? <laughs> uh, Zach, uh, funny, she doesn't look dryish, it doesn't look dryish. I remember the, the man, the man with two brains, uh, Steve Martin, and the the dead men don't wear plaid. The Steve Martin movie, Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, fantastic. Carl Reiner was in that movie with him. Uh, Brian, what about Bob? Amer Bill Murray, classy, unbelievably funny. Zach, um, Druish, uh, autocorrect, don't like that word. Uh, Michael, uh, the old ninety sixer, uh, DQ Zach Druish, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, don't say the word cleaning woman. Don't say the word cleaning woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the dead men don't wear plaid and the man with two brains. Uh, fantastic. Another movie that was that Steve Martin did was All of Me. That was a pretty good movie with Lily Tomlin and Steve Martin, All of Me. I believe that's what it was called. Um, we're at 139 on the gain now for the Dow. We're backing off here. 12 minutes to go. A JR Uncle Bruce, if you watch the Christmas story, the dad yells, it's a clinker when the smoke comes out of the heat register. I know what a clinker is, and you likely do also. Uh, Zach, nothing left but uh, fat and gristle grunts. <laughs> Lame duck. The jerk. I have a special purpose. I have a special purpose. <laughs> oh, Lordy Lou. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Blazing Saddles. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> a 130-point gain on the Dow. A little slump here with 11 minutes to go. The s and is down 2.8 now. NASDAQ down 52. Uh, we're down $1.17 on oil. There you go. Just a, just a little, you know, I found my special purpose. I found it. Uh, someone hates those cans. <laughs> uh, nothing but trouble and the Blues Brothers. Oh, yeah, of course, the Blues Brothers. Love that movie and uh, nothing but trouble. Um, uh, let's see, DQ, uh, Gunja, 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 Lunga. Um, uh, Credit Savage, Sean Candy was also in Home Alone. That was such a cool cameo. 
uh, the, one of the Schmengi brothers or something. I don't know if he was a Schmengi in that movie, but he wore he wore the polka outfit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, John Candy was asked by the uh, director John Hughes, um, could he come over? Could he give him a scene for this movie? And um, he was working on something, and um, uh, John Hughes promised him that um, one day, I just need you for one day, I can get the whole thing done. We'll have everything set up. I'll send you the script now. Here's what we're doing. It's you and Catherine O'Hara, a bunch of, bunch of guys in the back of a U-Haul truck. One day, just a one day, he came over, he did it, and... Uh, yeah, he and John Hughes were close. Uh, they 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 would have made a lot more movies together. Steve Martin, Rick Mar Rick Mariano is my blue heaven. Right on. Um, great movies. Also the uh, the various uh, movies that Martin made about uh, the the you know when he took over um, he re he he they redid the movies. Uh, Oh gosh! Remember with, with, uh, Steve Martin? Martin Short was the wedding coordinator. Um, Diane Keaton was his wife, uh, and his daughter surprised him by announcing she's getting married. He couldn't believe it. Um, what was the name of that movie? You remember that? And they did a spin-off, the baby with the babies, and all that. You remember all those? Uh, oh my gosh! Oh my lord! My Blue Heaven was insane. Such good comedy, says Credit Savage of Wall Street. We have eight minutes to go, you guys. 131 point gain on the down. ATIP 51.8 up 1.2 cents. Rick Moranis quit Hollywood to raise his kids. Good man. Yep, he did. Rick Moranis. You remember that movie with that that plant, that man eating plant? What was that called? Remember that? Rick Moranis was in that. Um, yep, 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 yep. Tesla down 33. Apple down 298. GameStop 2633. Low of the day. I think we're at it again. We're pushing the low of the day around on. Uh, GameStop, uh, 2630 is the low of the day, 2633 right now. Uh, we're down here, down 37 centinos. Uh, the Birdcage or Father of the Bride, that was a great movie. Father of the Bride was uh, was um, the, 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 the Steve Martin movie, which was a takeoff from the movie made in the 50s. Little Shop of Horrors, that's right. Father of the Bride, yep. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. I Can't Forget the Three Amigos. And Little Shop of Horrors, great titles. All of those movies were phenomenal, hilarious. Little Shop of Horrors, Larry remembers. Uh, Parenthood. <laughs> Steve Martin made a lot of movies. I love the Steve Martin movie um, with Eddie Murphy. Uh, remember the? I can't remember the name of the movie, but it was about a, a, a nickel and dime movie outfit, movie making outfit, and they wanted to shoot. Uh, they wanted to shoot Eddie Murphy in real life. And use his uh, use his um, whatever he did in real life and put it into a movie they were making without him knowing it. You remember the name of that movie with uh, Steve Martin and uh, Eddie Murphy himself, of course. Uh, great movie. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids says Richard Garland. Uh, Square Uncle Bruce, is it possible that when, for example, Sofi hits first time in the week four fifty, then all a second time the option is already higher in premium? It could. It could happen. It could happen. Uh, Chris Savage, uh, planes, trains, automobiles. Um, What's the name of that movie with Eddie Murphy and Steve Martin? Um, Bowfinger. There it is. Yes. It's not Brewster's Millions. See you all next week. Thank, thank you, Nick. Uh, yeah, Bowfinger. Michael, you got it. I R Aaron, you got it. Thank you. Uh, Brian, the credit savage of Wall Street. Yes, I mentioned that one. Great movie. Everyone should watch it in the holidays. Bowfinger was fantastic. Uh, had a really neat cast in there. What was the gal's name in that movie? The the gal that came in as a, as a hitchhiking... Uh, she came in on a bus, and then they took advantage of her, and then she took advantage of them. <laughs> she became, she became the most, uh, the most knowledgeable uh, Hollywood player um, uh, by moving up the chain with everybody. She'd sleep with everybody until she was sleeping with studio heads. Uh, what was her name? Um, oh gosh, I can't remember her name. Heather Graham. There you go. Fantastic, Michael. Heather Graham, just fantastic in that movie. So much fun. And then uh, I remember. Where Steve Martin, they had to hire some guys to work uh, uh, the cameras, and they hired some uh, uh, some some. I think they hired three Mexican guys that were like groundskeepers, and they gave them cameras to use, and they didn't know anything about it. But by the end of the movie, they had figured out all the shots 
and all the uh, they were they were talking now cameraman talk producer director talk about exposure time and light coming from here it was so funny to watch this this movie had so many little subplots in it that the character development as the movie went on was just phenomenal the writing of that movie was really something and eddie murphy playing two different roles his his himself uh the the, the so-called slick eddie murphy the actor and then the dumb brother um um over here i mean oh my that was great that was so great um we're not even gonna hit a million GameStop volume today no surprise here heather graham was so hot uh batteries not included i really enjoyed that one as a kid right on we're down to four minutes guys four minutes watch bowfinger the next chance you get definitely watch bowfinger uh you'll love it uh the credit savage of wall street only the lonely and stripes are classic john candy um man i was so sad when he passed his stripes was great some from way back when stripes oh yeah eddie uh, um um uh um yeah uh murray um uh, yeah murray and and was it uh there were a bunch of guys in that movie just a bunch of them um i can't remember the names off the top i'm i'm freezing out because i'm dead tired only lonely stripes are classics yeah yeah we miss them three minutes four three four minutes to go we're up 130 on the dow that's all still a game it is a game let's not poo poo that it's a 130 gate now 127 the, the s p down 3.7 s and nasdaq down 57 points so there you go um and we'll see what's going on um uh yeah heather graham in the hangover was incredible very cute right she played a i guess a stripper in that movie yeah she's very cute uh abram yamanez number 215 thumbs up bruce uh thank you my man i had an ex whose sister looked like heather graham and the ex knew i had a crush on the actress it was always a fight when her sister was around <laughs> yikes i miss these long shows with bruce and market talk and lots of jibber jabber about nothing it's wonderful almost like seinfeld a show about nothing that's what today is we're down to three minutes, kids, and we're grinding it out here, uh, trying to survive. We're up 140 on the Dow. Oh, my. 50.8 cents on ATIP, uh, up three-tenths of a penny. That's it. Tesla down 42. Apple down 308. GameStop down 36 to 30. 2632 with a 2631 trade. The low today on GameStop, 2630. We're at 2631.32 right now. That's it down 38 cents options are shrinking time and dollars down go your contracts 26 30 26 29 new low in the last minute and a half 26 26 on your GameStop. we're dropping we're down 44 cents to 26 26 your options are slipping a little more 26 23 they're slipping a little more there you go a little sell-off in the last minute on GameStop. the dow still holding a 133 gain right now. Um, uh, S&P down two, NASDAQ down 57.2. 26.20 on GameStop. That is another new low. 26.20 on the day with a little late last second, last minute sell off on GameStop. That's what we see at the moment. How about that, kids? Uh, Seinfeld shows have mostly a joke. As the background story, Splair, our joke was probably that someone had the idea to open up the market today for half a day. DQ, why can't you be more like your sister? Lorraine, uh, Uncle Bruce, have a good weekend. Thank you. Michael is laughing. We're down to the last minute, kids. It's almost over. 26.18 on GameStop. Another new low trade down 52. 26.17. 26.16 is the low of the day now on GameStop. Just some, some dribbles and drabbles coming in the endles to go lower. That's what we're doing. Uh, 150 gain on the Dow. It's going up at the end. GameStop's going down at the end. Uh, Tesla, 182.88 down 32. Apple down 296 to 148.11. GameStop, 26.14 down 56 cents today. And Larry has made it official by hitting the bells. Thank you, Larry. 26.14 low trade i'm showing on gamestop i don't know if it got any lower than that my biggest ipad is frozen up 2614 at the end of the session 1 million 
93,000 traded on down 56 cents. The old surfer, thanks again for the extended show. Uncle Bruce, have an awesome weekend, everybody. DQ, thank you, Larry. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. And thanks for the thumbs ups, guys. 216. You gotta love that. You gotta love that. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. It's a cool, cool beans thing. Two dollars, two twenty-six dollars, fourteen cents on GameStop off fifty-six for the final trade of the day. That's what I think we got. And there you have it. Uh, thanks for the marathon. There, marathon show. Bruce is Zach uh, Credit Savage. Twenty-six oh one now. Well, we're getting bounce around, and aftermarket and all kinds of stuff. Cool beans, babies. Cool beans. Thank you guys, Karim. Thanks, Uncle Bruce, for the long show. Today's show, four hours, twenty-nine minutes. Uh, you're welcome, everybody. Thank you for your your loyalty to the channel. Thank you, Bruce. Have a great weekend. The Credit Savage says thanks, Uncle B says JJ. Michael H twenty-six fifteen officially out of the money. Arms folding works. Um, Matthew, thank you, Uncle Bruce. Have a great weekend, everybody. Larry Titus, mmm, think assume does not know. It's a short day. It usually rings some bells or two. Didn't do it today. Michael, 2625s are out of the money. They're out of the money at expiry. Giddy up, 2614. How about that? How about that? JR, go watch that video, Uncle Bruce. It was fun to make and I hope everyone enjoys it. By the way, Pulse Guitar has some serious shedding, uh, shredding skills. Can't say it enough. I will check out. I will check out that video on that uh, on that thing. A fool of a took. Enjoyed the show today. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you all. All the best to all of you from around the world. After hours goes to five o'clock p.m. By the way, uh, says DQ. Uh, Splair, you all have a great, relaxed, and smooth weekend. We'll see you all on Monday. Yes, we will. We'll be here Monday morning, everybody. Thank you all. Have a pleasant, uh, pleasant weekend. Larry, today was like a good old days. I'm gonna stream all day long and getting me. And get and I'm me getting no work done. Uh, Credit Savage, Jr. What video? Share on Discord. Oh my gosh! Yes, it was shared on Discord. On Discord. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. I'm packing it in. I'm done. I'm tired. I got a video to watch. I'll see you guys Monday. You guys take care. Okay. Uh, DQ. Uh, it's on Discord. There you go. All right. Take care, guys. Bye for now. Thanks, Larry. See you, pal. Thanks, uh, Credit Savage. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you.